Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. It is episode 303 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett. Mary just gave me a look. I'm here with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hello, crisis actors. Happy Valentine's Day. It's, it's your girl, Mary. Can you feel the hatred and the toxicity and resentment in the air? Is it in the air? Can you feel it, Brett? I can feel it a little bit. <laughs> uh, I asked the chat if they thought Valentine's Day was a psyop, so we'll wait and get those yeah, results. Yeah, we'll see in a about bit. the results. Yeah. I saw also some comments saying, no Hannah Claire, we eat eclairs. And I was thinking, like, that don't, would actually be a good thing. Don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah, like, but she is here, yes. so you don't have to eat any eclairs. Hello. Yeah, no French pastries for you. <laughs> uh, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for TimCast.com. Thanks for having me back, guys. How you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? You know, yeah. getting by. It's a, okay. Actually, no, I do <laughs> wow. I do have a complaint. The oh. every time <laughs> we do this show, the weather is like 60 degrees out. Okay. Every it's like time. 60 you do it daily. Every, my every day during the week lately, it seems like it's really nice out. And then when the day is over, it's obviously the it's dark out by that time. And then on the weekends, it's just kind of meh. Like really? it's just meh. That's not good. We should yeah. just take class outside. What are we doing That's here? such a good idea. Let's pick up our phones. We'll live stream PCC from our individual, yeah. what, whatever, Instagram profiles. We should but do we'll that. sit next to each other and talk. And that way, if you really understand, understand the conversation, you have to simultaneously watch all three of our live streams at once. <laughs> the hero of the, the class was always the person that convinced the teacher to take class outside. Mm -hmm. And it never worked out well. Like, papers would be flying. Yep. Uh, yeah, nobody ever brought any. I mean, those with trapper keepers could keep things... Locked down tight, but otherwise you're you're kind of screwed. I do miss that. I also um, do you remember the game Red Rover? Red Rover, mm -hmm. like that, I mean, that, that was, was a, like psychotic. It's a sociopathic Dude, game for an adult to make. Kids I cried. Do. I love it. it I have never great. heard of an adult making children. Do it. It's always children making. Yes, other they children choose do it. to do it. They want this. at recess. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. It's simply not appropriate for gym class. You can understand where gladiator culture came from, right? <laughs> well, also, like, uh, I was watching, I've been watching uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and there's this amazing scene early on when they're talking about, it's this episode where um, Xander gets, he gets possessed by a hyena, by a pack of hyenas. That's that's not actually what happens, but it's, it's the general idea is that they get, like, trans-possessed by, like, a bunch of, by, like, a, a pack of hyenas, and they, like, basically beat this dude down playing, playing dodgeball, right? Mm -hmm. It shows, like, all of them being mean to this one kid because it shows the pack mentality of whatever they were talking about there. And I love dodgeball, too. Dodgeball was incredible. Maybe Gen Z is so fragile yeah. because they weren't raised playing Red Rover and Dodgeball. No, I, I played those games. I just was terrible at them, and PE class wasn't my strong. It, it happens. Oh, my goodness. Thank already. you. We've got a different one today. It's much calmer today. This is Carter. Yeah, it has a nice ambiance. It's just like we're in a rocket ship taking off. Yeah. Who's that? Is that you? No, it's Carter. It's all Carter. It's Carter. That's uh, no, I, I have not. I've not brought myself yet to the point of like doing like st sitting up here like and then like wondering like I hope nobody's downstairs and then doing my own voiceover. <laughs> like I'm not doing that. Like I don't I don't even I can't. So can't if it that. was you, you wouldn't admit it to me is what you're saying. Basically, yeah. <laughs> like Carter actually has has a good singing voice. Mine would just be like, "Christ is part." It would be that horrible. would be even funnier. Please <laughs> do that immediately. It's like um, just it, you calmly in a monotone voice saying. Crisis party. There was a there, there's a an interlude on an old Master P album where uh, a, a guy who's pretending to be Master P calls someone and the guy asks him to make him say uh and the guy goes uh because <laughs> like, that's not him hang the phone up that would be what it be what it would be like me trying to do uh, like no, it's a like crisis it's like party. Miss France from yes Miss Universe right oh my gosh get her, her to... scream was crazy. <laughs> Like, do, do you think I can't even get, do it. I wonder if she has a cameo. Do you think we could get her to say pop culture crisis in that voice on cameo? <laughs> that would be the I perfect stick. That Somebody would... find out immediately. <laughs> Chat, you're on it. We've got a lot of cancer to cover in the first so much so part much of the today. show. Like a lot. What so, a weird segment. So we are, we're in this. Uh, guys, uh, <laughs> the main topic today is that Julia Fox is an absolutely abhorrent human being who's destroying her own son's life. You she guys are now. Kid? This is now where people are going to say, who is Julia Fox? I don't even know who that is she's an actress she was an uncut gem she dated kanye for like 
uh, a three hot minute, whole seconds. three whole seconds. Enough in her to life. do a weird photo shoot for yep. a magazine while pretending yep. to be on a date. And, and now she gets a lot of press. Yes, she's she's awful. She's Emily Ratatouille, but uglier. She's worse. So we're gonna talk about yeah. that. Should have gotten nominated for a grifty. Like that's the vibe. That's Is that an award? That's yeah. A real thing. Mary got the, so excited. She's yeah, like, yeah, "What yeah. are the grifties?" We had the the hoteps on. Um, uh, IRL the other week and they Hotep Jesus runs a an award show every year called and the people Grifty. go to it yep. it's virtual from what I understand although they want to move it to be in person <laughs> Alex Stein won this year uh, I don't know who won last year but like that's anyone funny. can be nominated you can also nominate groups I've got to step up my game I want to win one mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure. the only award I'll I, ever get that I, I'm proud of I think that there's only like individuals and groups but maybe as they get bigger they'll expand we um, can win one here Mary we got yeah. to we can win one here could. so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about life coming at you fast to this guy who uh, basically defamed J.K. Rowling and she decided to sue like, like any good litigious person would choose to do so. We are also going to talk about Jenna Ortega being so Gen Z that she's complaining about having to work long hours. I'm being hyperbolic. She, she got very upset about in this article about having to work the long hours to make Wednesday a thing, which, you know, you'd think would be good considering how successful it's been, like your hard work has paid off. So we'll get into that. We are also going to talk about the return of Roseanne Barr are. And if you didn't care about that coming back, neither did I. But it goes to my, further to my argument that cancel culture is now, in fact, a product that is being sold. Yeah. Or at least the return from cancel culture is a product that's being sold to I people. I bet there are PR firms that specialize in yeah. how to rehabilitate. Returning from cancellation. I, no, I bet you that's something people are putting on their resumes now. Like, if you've got a successful case, like, whoever Louis C.K.'s uh, publicist is, is probably like, hey, I brought this guy back from the brink. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that. But we've got some, we've got multiple cringes of the day today yeah the uh abundance of cringe it's just our cup overfloweth Let, let's do rihanna first you know that's not sure really cringe. yeah um I, I didn't know this when we covered the super bowl the other day but they actually censored a clip of rihanna putting up the illuminati hand symbol I, at the super bowl during her performance how would you censor it wouldn't that just confirm it for everyone who believes in the illuminati exactly but i think so um stupid. maybe maybe one of the super chatters was right when they said they're trying to appeal to the America good crowd. Bud Light buyers. That's I, I'm here for it. I like Bud it. Light <laughs> purchasers. Well, I, look, I, do you remember the old commercials um, like um, Real American Heroes and Real Men of Genius from Bud Light? The, the Those old, old commercials? Oh, you no. guys are both way too young for... Never mind. No uh, idea. The, the people in the chat will remember the Real Men of Genius commercials. They, okay. were, they were incredible. Uh, so let's play this clip. I also want to point out that there was also another satanic panic-like overreaction where some he said that like the harness hook on her Stupid jacket meters, come on. Uh, where it said it looked like a pentagram and I just ro I got I a mean, migraine okay. from rolling my eyes. Stu Peters you had me in the first half with the Damar Hamlin mm, jacket so you lost me with the harness rig yeah. being a pentagram it wasn't even close All right, to that shape but he's got some good coverage of the Ohio stuff yeah. so <laughs> There oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! What am I gonna do? Jay Z is pogging right now. He is. He loves man. this. Rockefeller Records. Like, Him and Beyonce. People have been accusing um, Jay Z of being part of the Illuminati for years because of the hand gesture. So what is like? What is their explanation for the hand gesture? Uh, I have like, always is there one. I have always heard they do to it be? to show that they are part of the Illuminati. Yeah. But did he start it as like a gang symbol for his record label, or it was like just, why would what she, it sounds like? Why would she choose to do that? To do that. But more more than him just do that. I remember there was an old. No, I, I want you. an explanation. Thank like where there was an old video from? of of uh, Justin Bieber and Jack Yu doing that at the end of a concert. But why? Uh, That's my thing. Like. I uh, guess. Oh, in the chat, Diamond Diamond Dallas Page. That was literally the diamond cutter symbol. Diamond Dallas Page would go like this and go bang, bang. But they're not doing it for that reason. Well, he was doing because it it's shaped like a diamond. Right. But yeah. like, why aren't they? What is their explanation for their interest in this hand symbol? Like when uh, Demar Hamlin did his appearance yeah. at the Buffalo Bills thing, which I'm still not convinced about. He did something similar, but people were saying, oh, he's trying to make the heart, but it's not coming yeah. up, Always right? with the plausible deniability. Yeah. But that's there's no plausible deniability there, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. She make it a triangle with her hand. Why? I, I just, and then she uh, she's like the egg, I said, and then all of her backup dancers are the sperm for her pregnancy announcement. Yeah, which I love like she was ripping off Beyonce. Beyonce was at some award show and did a performance and then unbuttoned her jacket and revealed that she was pregnant. How long her. ago was that? Uh, I think that was with 
Blue Ivy, but oh. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it was Blue Ivy because with the twins, she did like some weird photo shoot that I did not like. See, a lot of people theorized that Blue Ivy's name had some secret satanic ritual. Oh meaning, yeah, and that, I forgot that, about that child is some type of I don't know, like what is ritualistic it? sacrifice what is to it? the Hollywood Illuminati. What's the connection with her name? I forget what it was, but I, I read See, a lot of conspiracy websites when I was in middle school and I, I was fully convinced. I, I love they the had conspiracy me. for sure, but like if it's not strong enough that you can be like, oh, here is the explanation. Yeah. I feel like we're struggling. I'm right? sure I could yeah. find an explanation, but it, it had me hook, line, and sinker when I was 12. So yeah, it happens. <laughs> All right, so so we don't just have that. We have. Uh, I am going to give like a a, a um, some type of parental advisory. If if your eyes burn easily, I wouldn't look at the screen personally. All right. Avert um, your eyes. Avert your eyes if you don't want to see something that's absolutely disgusting or or at least scary in, in some context. So here we go. Uh, Emily, <laughs> uh, Emily Ratatouille and Eric Andre say we're bearing it all for Valentine's Day. And if that's not cringe of the day, I don't know what is. Uh, Why? Why? No, do zoom to do out. This? Zoom out. Sorry. Get away. Sorry. Sorry. No. All no, right, we're, no. We're, we're zoomed out now. Also, who's guys, this other guy? Guys, is don't do. He's a com he's a comedian. That's they're, yeah. They're just friends. And, and no, they're, because they're Emily Ratatouille has a list of all of the most visually repulsive men in the entertainment industry, and she's just gonna date every single one. It's just yes, no thank you to to me, and and also it's like it is such a like it, I don't know if it's like her being mean to him like she's like yes I look good naked you very clearly don't look exactly. good exactly I like, think that's why she dates all of these ugly dudes because yeah. it makes her feel superior I guess for him it's more of a flex like, like in his own ego it's a flex because he's like look at what I look like and look what I've pulled but if you think about it it's not really a flex to be the purse puppy of some like middling celebrity with a podcast if he's I got his own money if he's got his own money I think he sees it as a flex i just again <laughs> i hate to overuse the word of the day but this is obviously a grip for some attention and i don't understand why it was necessary right i'm i'm with you i i but what money are they making off of this for it to become a grip <laughs> but grift doesn't have any money right grift is attention we're talking about it she got an article out of it keeps her name in the paper fair enough that's all fair she enough. needs well, that's and i think that's sort of a weird yeah. fancy dude take. after the 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 Julia Fox stuff from today. I'm actually warming. Like, at least she's just mean to men, like, in a normal way. Emily Ratatouille is. Somehow, Julia Fox, who I used to consider them yeah. both equally as awful, I now consider Julia Fox worse. It's like Emily's hatred for men is more of a casual uh, girl yeah. power thing. Yeah. And then Julia Fox's hatred for men is just genocidal. Mm -hmm. It's like violent and scary. But before we get to that, speaking of people that have absolutely cringe takes on anything to do with relationships or families, we have Chelsea Handler. This video, this video is, is just... incredible. I, I like it. I didn't think it was uh, real at first, but then I realized that it's 2023. She's so also it... made all of these shows before. Before yes. you even play it, she has made all of these shows Dude. before. This is not even new material. This I... is for The Daily Show. Dude, this is the no... direction that The Daily video. Show is going in no. is just bleak i thought this was an old i've seen this video before or at least no, a version I think it's new okay then this then she this... redid the same bit with yes. a different iteration i could be yeah. wrong but i know she's like when i remember making her these jokes before like the lighting was different she was in a different outfit but yeah. like it's all, let's see it it's all, all right. same thing here we go make sure the volume's there this is a day in the life of a childless woman i wake up at 6 a.m i remember that i have no kids to take to school so i take an edible masturbate and go back to sleep I wake up at 12.30 p.m. and get ready for a busy day of doing whatever the f I feel like. I put Not on my most impractical and stylish it. shoes since I won't be chasing a child around the grocery store. I go to my fave spot in Paris to grab a croissant. I do a meditation sesh on the plane since I have no screaming kids, allowing me all the time in the world to become enlightened. The weightlessness of my existence has granted me superhuman powers. I teleport myself back home. Then I get ready for a night out with whatever hot guy Ugh. I met on Raya Classy. that morning. I call up a so babysitter no... and tell her that I don't need her since I still don't have kids. Now it's time for a workout, so I hit Mount Everest for a quick climb. I invent a time machine, go back in time, and kill Hitler. Freeze, you bastard! It's amazing what you can do when you have this much free time. And that's a day in the life of a childless woman. And the cope is strong. 
Like, it's one thing. There are plenty of women that say they don't want kids, and that's fine. But when you go out of your way... She's actively putting down women who do have kids. Yes. She's saying their existence is embarrassing. And also, like, I find it sad how she's referring to the weightlessness of her existence. Like... Sad don't you want your existence to, to have weight to someone yeah yeah in the world also <laughs> let's point out here she's saying i don't have kids and i'm so great also i don't have a stable partner and yeah. so i go on dating apps at whatever yeah. how old is this person specifically raya right she's like still trying to find someone i don't uh. know this just seems like such a this is convincing I, I already want to have kids, but I think you should show this to everyone who's on the fence and they'll be like, oh, actually, I do want my life to have meaning and purpose. Mm-hmm. You know who actually honestly made a really great case for it was Andrew Tate. When he, when he talked about how he's like, here I was, you know, visiting my grandma and there's like 70 people in the room, all that have come, you know, essentially from this one woman. Mm-hmm. And when you women are one day sitting around and with nothing but your your money in your in your middle class apartment to keep you warm, you're going to you're going to feel sorry for yourself one day. And he's right. Like you're it is a, a sort of meaningless existence in a way to not try to at least, uh, I guess, pass on your your genes, I'm right? I'm okay with Chelsea Handler not passing on her genes. You but, know, that sounds really mean, but she has just been <laughs> such a negative person for so long that I think yeah. maybe we skip this well, one. Well, I, I, yeah. I don't understand where her feeling comes from that people are trying to force her to have kids. Like, And no also, one is like, Especially no one in Hollywood. And you're yeah. past menopause, babe. Like, we know you don't have kids. We, We've gotten, it? We, yeah. we, we can see it. It's we, over. Who is it that we talked about that one day where somebody's like, she's like, 55 years old she's like and i'm just like i'm not going to be able to have kids now and and we were like yeah you weren't going to be able to have well kids no like she 10. said like i w- i've been thinking about it or something like <laughs> yeah. crazy like that was i on the show that day i feel like i, remember, I think it was like day. a test episode that we never released we're like, when i first got here actually you like, are not having children i mean what's what's weird about this to me is like if you're happy having childless kids why do you have to put or childless kids. If you're happy being childless, why do you have to constantly prove that your life is better and you're more free and yeah. you can do whatever? Like she never says, "Oh, because I'm wealthy, I get to fly to Paris." Oh, because I'm wealthy, I get to. Like, Her face looks like she's lying to me. Like she looks like she's faking it. Like she wants kids and doesn't have them, and it. And she's like coping hard. Well, I mean, yeah, someone who's happy without children wouldn't post this video. She's been talking about the fact that she doesn't have kids for, I, I mean, I feel like it's been going back for at least a decade, probably longer. I mean, her identity is being like. A childless person and she has never seemed happy to yeah. me and her life is about what self-indulgence and she's going on tour now with amy Sh- oh no i'm sorry that's amy uh Schumer? that's no, and amy poehler maybe and in, in chelsea poehler, who has kids and talks about being yeah. a kid like amy poehler is very different vibe than chelsea yeah. handler i don't know why amy poehler would do that i might be thinking of someone else i just i saw something else uh all those female comedians they all look alike they all run together they, they all run together they're all, all basically... equally unfun no amy poehler is all right <laughs> i think she she and tina fey are all right yeah good god friends, for sure well you know what they both have in common they have kids we maybe, need maybe a, that's, that's the key true. to being a successful female com- comedian i would like to have like an alec baldwin like a, a button that it sounds like a gunshot and then it goes good god lemon like that would be fantastic. Yeah, that'd be funny. Uh, I need a soundboard. I'm I telling just, you. What What is just like Chelsea Handler doing? Like, why make this? It's not funny. It's kind of cringy and weird. Life it, must be boring. Is it also? I mean, <laughs> is it also? Tell, I mean, that, why does she have to sell it so hard? Yeah. Like, I'm able to do all these things, and I'm more enlightened, and I can wear better shoes than you would. Like, all this petty, weird stuff. It's also a lot of it was just you have money. You could do all that stuff. That's with, my point. You could you could do all that stuff with kids because her you could kids have would have been out of the house already. Yeah, by yeah. now, you, so she would be living exactly the same lifestyle. Also, exactly the same amount of money. Everything she bragged about is because she is wealthy. Thank you. Thank guys. you. They're they're listening for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sound effect. Oh. Okay. We haven't even like actually started the show yet. So sometimes I think women who make videos like this are trying to cling on to like being youthful, right? Like yeah. she's also got a lot of Botox, work on her face, do whatever you want. I don't care about that so much as you are trying to present yourself as youthful, so yeah. right? Like probably it is. Her, not prepared, um, like literally younger than you actually are. So she's bringing up the fact that she's childless and she's got, you know, 
her hair done and her makeup and whatever else. And it's because she's trying to project this like I am young and hot. But well, yeah, she wakes up in the morning with makeup a on, full face of makeup, so, is this, is and it, a blowout. Is it also a form of social conditioning that like they're they're trying to convince women that have been convinced first they were convinced by feminism to not get married in their twenties, then they were convinced in their thirties to continue going for the CEO yeah, chair that none of them get to. They're trying to say stay the CEOs. course. Like you don't understand yeah. when you get to my age, Chelsea Handler says it's still good. I still like it. They, I still, I'm, I'm glad I made this choice which I don't think is true. What they did is, okay, she's like, what, in her 50s? So what they did is, okay, so in the 20s, they're like, you know, you don't need no man. Just get railed by a bunch of dudes and go on with your life. That's fine. And then in their 30s, they're like, you've got a career, be in your career. But in the 40s, the medical industrial complex gets in there like, you need IVF. Nobody loves you. Have kids on your own. And so they tried the IVF treatments in their 40s. It doesn't take some in their 50s. In order to cope with the fact that they never got kids, now Chelsea Handler has to do her part to make them feel like they're well, okay. And I would love an expose. I mean, I actually don't want this because I feel like it would be a really inappropriate invasion of privacy. But if she ever wrote a memoir... Uh, if she volunteered this information on her own, I'd be curious to know if she ever tried to go through IVF or tried to have a child on yeah. her own. Because if she admits it, it's a crack in the core of this I'm childless by choice mentality that she has been promoting throughout her whole career. I, I do see when I see, like, when people post videos talking about this stuff, there are obviously far funnier people and funnier women that I still think come off as a little bit bitter who post videos about this on, like, TikTok and Instagram. And in the comments section, they tend to be fairly reasonable. Like a lot of the people are like, look, I have kids. I never wanted to push anyone to have them. And that seems to be the take that most of the women who make videos like this are talking about. They, they feel annoyed at all of the adults in their life when they were younger asking them, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids? But it always, again, kind of like what we talk about with like fighting a religion in America that hasn't been do culture dominant in 20 years. Like, are there really people going up to women these days saying, when are you going to have kids? When are they going to have kids? If anything, it if you decide to have kids, they'll pressure you to stop and say like, don't you want to travel? Don't you want to do this? Don't you want to do that? But you can Instead of having kids. Change. See, I think women do feel a pressure to have children, yeah. but I think okay. it's biological right. and internal. And I don't think that it's necessarily socially uh, conditioned. Well, the, right? the, the things they're t claiming seem like reasonable things that I have heard in the past. They just don't feel like they've been culturally sure. relevant in a long time. And I think that there are women who by choice don't want to have children. And, you know, maybe that's okay, but don't promote it as something that it's not, right? Yeah. And don't put down moms. Don't put down moms and just say it was my choice. Like yeah. the fact that she has to constantly reference like, well, I don't have kids, so I'm freer than you. So I have more like more time to do whatever, to be more selfish than you. Like you're not promoting values that I would want to cultivate within myself. And I feel like if you do choose not to have children, I'm sure you have good reasons. You don't need to justify them to me. You don't need to say, well, I get to take an edible yeah. and masturbate, and that's why it's a good thing not to have kids. Like, that seems vapid, and I feel sad for you that that's the focus of your yeah. life. Also, a lot of the women that do have kids feel these these days, or stay-at-home moms have to constantly justify the fact that they're stay-at-home moms to people who tell them that they're uh, bolstering the patriarchy by choosing to stay at home. If anyone tells right? me they're a stay-at-home mom, I think I'm going to start, like, clapping out loud. I think it's great. Well, every once in a while, they go off script and stop being the choice feminists they claim to be. Yeah. They say, oh, I don't have anything against stay-at-home moms. I just want them to have the choice. I want all women to have the choice to either stay at home or to work so or to do both. Men, you think men should earn more money than women so that their wives can stay home, yes? Is that what you believe? Right. Are you okay with that? That yeah. would give them the choice to stay home. When pressed, it's actually not that they want women to have the choice. They they want women well, to make again, the choice they want them to make. Exactly. And that they are more liberated, right? They yeah. are they are the ones actually fighting for women's freedoms. And this is being pushed out by a Hollywood com, you know, industry that has tremendous power over the mindset. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much power the I mean, Daily no, Show has Thankfully, over... The Daily Show is completely yeah. irrelevant. Fair, fair enough. And nobody thinks Chelsea Handler is cool. Fair enough. Also, other than people who are like Chelsea Handler. If you yeah. also Sorry, this is occurring to me. If you were childless by choice, right? You, don't, you didn't think you were the right person to raise kids, and yeah. I understand that. I don't think kids should be raised in homes. Ideally, they're raised where they are loved and wanted, right? Yeah. Yep. This girl doesn't even have a boyfriend or a husband. Like, I yeah. guess you're strong. Being childless doesn't mean you can't have a relationship. Why, why can't you hold a steady relationship, Chelsea? Like, seems Do like men, you're just a very feel, selfish person. I feel like yeah. you are the worst, and people don't want to be around Is you. there a male analog to this where a guy goes, uh, where a guy makes videos like this, I guess? 
Like, I can't think of a... Like, I mean, it's more about I don't have the burden of a woman telling me what to do. Yeah. But it's wanting, not Wanting validation from me, yeah. blah, blah. I think it's sort of the inverse, right? She's saying, because I don't have kids, I get to do all this stuff. And men, it's like, because I'm not tied down to a wife. Yeah. Okay. But then, like, they don't mention the way that she's Which I think is over. equally cringe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, yeah. I think it's bad. Why do yeah. you guys like this? Yeah. yeah. All right. Attachments, helpful. Oh, and the last thing is, uh, in case any of you haven't heard already... Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly are no more. Forgot about that. <laughs> and they announced it in the corniest, most high school way possible, where Megan Fox posted on Instagram burning, I guess, what might be letters or pictures in a bonfire. She's 12 years. She's, she's 13 years old. And her, her caption on Instagram was, you can taste the dishonesty. It's all over your breath from Beyonce's track, Pray You Catch Me, about yeah. Jay-Z's affair. So I guess she's implying there was cheating going on. Maybe that happens when you date an adult man baby. And they all, they um, like went to the Super Bowl party together and then they broke up dramatically apparently during it. Yeah. I saw this headline and immediately was like, when am I going on pop culture? Cause I feel like I don't get to talk about this with anyone else. Right. I wouldn't be emotionally invested except for the fact that we've discussed their bizarre relationship. Also, I feel like Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker have subtly distanced themselves from this bombshell couple for a little while here also yeah. like i wonder if like when this happened she like reached out to her like she wanted to like type something like an aim away message but since aim is not a thing anymore well, she deleted her instagram for a minute yeah. right did she yeah she like okay. posted her dramatic thing and then she took down her instagram i, don't I know just know back. she took down all of the posts with machine gun kelly Dude, that's the hard part of social media now like you got like you're gonna have to like go back through and delete everything you have <laughs> don't with worry another she's person. got a publicist who was like i'm fair on enough it. Yeah. and also she posted a screenshot i'm telling you guys i researched for this part of the show accidentally she posted a screenshot of like some text conversation where it wasn't clear, but it was clear them being like, I don't know how you put up with this. And she was like, the inner, my inner um, neglected and unloved child is living for this or something like something like that. Meaning like, oh my gosh, you mean you didn't, you dated him and you didn't, it didn't go well. Like you're LARPing That's as hard to believe. being sad. emotionally aware of also, your like motivation. I'm sure you're stuff. emotionally aware, but maybe if you're aware of it, go to therapy. Don't date this guy. Yep. All right, Next. guys, we are moving on. We are going to start today. So Julia Fox is a horrible person. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm being hyperbolic, I am so ready to prove you wrong because she is an absolutely awful human being. Let's start first with what she said about men and yeah. keep in mind the fact that this woman has, has a, a son of her own, a two-year-old son of her this own. This is all from a cover yeah. story that Elle from did Elle. on yeah. Julia Fox called The Gospel According to Julia Fox. And she's wearing a bunch of all denim outfits. And the first one is, I believe, blasphemous, like a blasphemous take on the Virgin Mary, which is super original. Celebrities keep keep doing that. You look very original and artistic. Here's what she, <laughs> here's what she said uh, about her, when talking about her son. I guess it wasn't just talking about her son, but just keep in mind she has a son. She had a her kid. son she is says, named Valentino, yes. and he is from her previous marriage, which ended in yeah. 2020, to a pilot. This one she was married. She says she was I'm, for she two lived, years. She lived a whole they, life. They dated for one month yeah. and got married in Vegas. I'm not against. And that. they were like, "This is gonna work out." Yeah. I don't know. We love. I love people who are decisive. I'm sad it didn't work out yeah. for them. She, she says. I'm terrified. I'm like, oh my God, I cannot create, I cannot produce another one of these horrible men. Yep. Her poor like, kid. Her, it's like, a what, totally what, normal what, thing to if you, think. If you watch her interview with Ziwe, it plays off like avant-garde, wannabe art nerd, edgelord crap. So the do problem is all of these her, photos, by the way. Her kid is not going to necessarily know that. And he's going to have to one day look back at this stuff. I don't know what would be worse. Would her having an OnlyFans be worse than finding out that your mom just hates your entire gender? Well, Julia Fox has already been a professional BDSM dominatrix. Yes. So she can do anything. The wow. appearance of, you know, propriety is kind of out the window. But yep. um, yeah, she said a lot of wild things in this interview and with Z-Way. And if you watch her interview with Z-Way from a couple months ago, Z-Way's whole thing is that she invites a guest on simply to embarrass them and trip them up on their own words. It's very And create clear. awkward silences yeah. to go viral, to, to humiliate that person. And it worked perfectly on Julia Fox because she's such an NPC and has all of these robotic responses that when they're scrutinized, she instantly looks like the moron she is. So like, 
the video literally starts with her saying, oh yeah, safe abortions, abortions for everyone. And she just goes on a bunch of tirades about how she's a self-hating white person. She talks constantly about how much she hates being white. Especially, yeah, yeah. She, she hates being herself for being white. She hates white people. Um, she has so many black friends. Uh, what is her <laughs> ex-pilot husband? Just out of curiosity. Oh, yeah, he's white. And also, and she's also called him a deadbeat dad to the media. And meanwhile, this guy is not even a celebrity. He's just a normal guy. Yep. So he's supposed to defend himself against the, the corporate Hollywood press. And she Based has all the power. No evidence that he's a deadbeat dad. Right. There's and no I don't I don't know the situation, but I assume that's why she was vulnerable to being whisked away by Kanye and this made into the, his dress up doll. This her behavior is whisked the worst. Whisked away or type voluntarily of, jumped in that yeah. current. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it gave her a huge boost. Mm -hmm. So she says, I don't know. Uh, she says, I feel like knowingly engaging in a heterosexual relationship, you are signing yourself up for an unhealthy dynamic. Literally all relationships in human history, with the exception of like yeah. a point zero zero one percentage point, yeah. are unhealthy dynamics. Good to know, Julia Fox. Thank yep. you. Uh, so she's uh, she goes on like the uh, the. Uh, By the way, in regard so to Kanye's yeah. anti-Semitism scandals, she said, "I feel bad for everyone involved." I feel bad for the Jewish people. Some of my Jewish friends are shook right now, and that breaks my heart. I really, truly would have never seen him taking this direction. Good to know you can even grift off of this guy losing his career opportunities when he gave you yours. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna, I want to read the rest of this one. It says Julia Fox is not done is is done with men. No, really, she's had it. No, she's not dating. You. She isn't having sex. She has no desire to be intimate with anyone. She says, "I want to be left alone." She says, "Is that supposed to be a good thing?" In her punctuated vocal fry, like, "Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't bother me." She's not just talking about men. She's had it with relationships. Although you can make your own assumptions about which about which ones with her recent exes. This is about men at large. Men who are, according to Fox don't recognize their privilege, men with fragile notions of their masculinity, men who are deadbeat dads, uh, and male politicians who make the kinds of policy decisions that leave single mothers to struggle. I'm picturing her like, I'm picturing Alabama, Julia Fox, or Mississippi, Julia Fox. She's never living anywhere where this is a problem. She's living in deep blue states all the time. She was raised in, I think, the Upper East Side. So she's in a deep According blue, to the article. Yeah. So, yeah. So she's and talking she said, to, like, you know, to get by in life, you have to be a little delusional. And in my mind, I've been famous for my entire life. And it sounds like that is just pathological narcissism. She, she's, this is what I talk about recently. Uh, a, a big thing that I've pushed back on lately is the idea of self-love. Self-love is a delusion, I think, mm -hmm. in modern culture that's really just self-aggrandizement and self-obsession that people have packaged into something that sounds like you're sticking up for yourself and I think it's disgusting. Like, I make the joke, I'm always like, we need more self-loathing. But what I'm actually talking about is we need a healthier understanding of who we are as people without putting blatant platitudes yeah. and buzzwords in front of it. Like, like they've replaced the idea of self-respect mm -hmm. with self-worship. Yeah, I think this whole photo shoot where she's trying to be artsy and edgy, everything in here, mm. in my opinion, is ugly. You know, she is so desperate for attention and for self-gratification that she can't think of anything else. She can't think about yeah. how talking about her son's father in the media will affect their future relationship. She can only think about her current intentions which are to gain as much fame as possible while talking also, about how she doesn't want to be famous and she wants to be left alone she's no no it's not that she doesn't want to be famous be she's always Lord. been famous she's I think, in one of these pictures has like all denim horn like devil horns coming out of her tits like <laughs> well and like she doesn't look I, she doesn't look beautiful she doesn't look sexy she, she looks, looks ugly on purpose she looks weird and she's admitted like, it to what end? She's in right? her villain era. And it's it's it reminds me of early Lady Gaga, right? Who also yeah. was raised in the Upper East Side, who wore kind of crazy outfits. Let's never forget the meat dress, right? And it was outlandish and it wasn't about being beautiful. It was about sort of sure. being a character. And it's like that, except more desperate for attention. Uh, I, I think I can at least back up Lady Gaga's crazy looks with the fact that she has real talent. And it, Julia Fox doesn't. Right. Lady Gaga was part of the character of Lady Gaga, I yeah. think. I fundamentally believe that. And it was interesting, and she doesn't do it as much now, but you still see some of it in her style. This is like 
these are the only designers who address me for this photo shoot so i'm gonna wear whatever they have out there like it's a mutually beneficial attempt to gain attention i i think one of the strange things about this whole interview is it's just so negative right there's yeah. no, it's not strange it's super she common these horrible days. outlook on the world horrible outlook she hates men she hates heterosexual relationship she thinks yeah. that this is bad and that's bad but she's not proposing any solution that's here, but the right? writer is still praising her yep. mm -hmm. like because people I, love the negativity these yeah i mean these the clips are great they'll circulate forever meanwhile she's not saying what kind of man she's trying to raise her son she's not saying what her values are she's not saying what are just good political bad. solutions for helping single mothers she's just telling you what's wrong yeah. with the world and oh no she's she telling is... you about the solution she's saying well okay babies. here here but here's that not line really, no. z-way ruthlessly mined julia fox for sound bites and it was... it was like listening to like a particularly mean bully pick on a hand right person. yeah so it was really bad z-way asked her do you think that we should just kill men and here's what she said I think that if the man deserves it, yeah, why not? Men kill women all the time for no reason. For no reason. reason. Time. Just, it just happens. Can't walk down the street without potentially. Some days murdered. I'm Mary. Some days I just have a bad day at work, and that's what I do. I just go out, and that's what I do. I'm sure there are some cases that you can definitively classify as a femicide. Yeah. But every time that a woman gets killed is not a femicide. Nope. Mm -mm. I also that's think like wild. it does downplay the seriousness of when women are murdered, especially in by romantic partners, right? By saying it happens all the time. Like, no, you yeah. should understand the circumstances. But when it they happen, it, it if has you a really want it to There is a reason, though. Like, I mean, maybe the, if she said in the Middle East or yeah. like in or, other countries. For, for no good reason, right? <laughs> yeah. For for reasons exactly, that are delusional yeah. and completely against their culture or against their values, right? Sure, I, I believe that. Yeah. But this, it happens all the time, nonchalance about it. If you really were wanting to protect women, wouldn't you take this chance, this uh, international mm -hmm. platform to say, I think it's really important that we do this to help women. Like this is an act of na narcissism masquerading as is, martyrdom. She's not that smart. She's just incredibly verbally intelligent talking about herself and herself yep. only, which is the case for a lot of these celebrities. And, uh, I think that she's full of resentment against everyone, but especially men after divorcing and being a single mom yeah. to this guy who is supposedly an absentee And she's gonna, reg she's gonna resent the son. She's gonna resent she's, the son. Yeah, she's clearly she resentful already. of her son, at least for being male. Yeah. And you said earlier, Brett, I almost wish she had a daughter so that at least instead of being self-hating, she would be hateful towards others, yeah. right? Because if she, that seems more merciful. Well, and if she mindset. had a daughter, it would be raising her to not trust anyone. I mean, can you imagine her sharing the custody of a female child with a man she already calls a deadbeat, right? Mm -hmm. the, I mean, that mm -hmm. dynamic would be so toxic to raise a child in. We can't yeah. trust any men, heterosexual relationships are bad. I'm, I repent all of my ways. Also, we don't like your dad. Like, it's just, asking to ruin the lives of young looking i know she would say like you're just like your father she probably says that to the boy too yeah. <laughs> insane it's uh, i want to talk about and she, the, she admitted that she almost killed somebody the, by the, the drug way. dealer i want to talk about this do you guys remember the story a couple years back they actually ended up making it a storyline on atlanta where liam neeson like an absolute like boomer gave the take where like his uh, his sister or his or his sister or somebody was like R-worded and he said he went out looking for people that looked like the person that attacked his sister. That's the vibes I got from this. So basically her friend died of a drug overdose and she assumed without seemingly any proof that this drug dealer gave her friend a bad pill intentionally and she wanted to get revenge and kill him so she waited outside his home watching him through her rear view mirror with her car seat down holding her dead friend's gun she openly admitted this on youtube and then what he just never showed up she she decided not to kill him i don't know why but re, re, so absolutely so insane that she would even admit to that do you think she's admitting or do you think she's lying yeah. does she want to seem more crazy than she you know is? what i mean like she doesn't have an end to the story like why you never do you, know why do you fall she through? says uh, if i were president uh she she says that if she were president she would give guns to every woman and not guns to any men well you know it is they are the great equalizer as a very pro we should make it the title for this video should be uh julia fox is extremely pro second amendment that's what it should be called hey, uh gun it ownership is, the, is up among women Maybe yep. she's just picking up on a trend she's yes. very confident that law-abiding citizens can responsibly use guns i love it uh, yeah, i mean 
Interesting. The media, NRA's new spokeswoman. The media <laughs> is always out censoring the stories of good Samaritan gun owners all the time. So I'm, I'm yeah. happy that she's fighting against the anti-gun media complex. It says, because I feel that if they can have a penis, which is a weapon of mass destruction, it can be, it can be. I think that women should be allowed to have the same, she said at the same time. I think it equals the playing field. I think we would get, we wouldn't get effed so much. That girl so much. is equating a gun to a metal penis. Yep. Julia Fox. Uh, another level. Should not tell any of the men that she's dating that penises are a weapon of mass destruction because they're definitely going to take it as a compliment. Oh, the guy took it as a compliment. If she said that to a dude, the uh, dude that dude still like hears no. that in his head and goes, <laughs> No, I hope he's like, oh, okay, she's on the Me Too train. I've got to back right out of here. Well, like, not, not smart if, enough for if that. If she's saying you came into my home armed simply by having your genitalia, that's not a good sign. I'm just, and she's got a son. A son who's going to grow up to either be trans or hate himself. What if he sounds Super like it? Heteromasculine. <laughs> he's just, <laughs> just to spite he's like, her. He's I like drinking yeah. beer. That's at what six. teenage rebellion is going to be yeah, like in 10 be years. Crazy. For sure. She's like, she's like, we're going like, to see a military enlistment in, spike. Yeah. His she's pilot like, dad's going to be like, don't worry, son. We'll get you out of yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. He's like, they're in an apartment building in like in uptown New York, and he's like chopping wood out front of the New York <laughs> apartment building, like right on the street in East Manhattan. We gotta like, get firewood. <laughs> she's like, we have gas. <laughs> he's like begging to go to boarding school, but it's military school. <laughs> like, go to Granola. Here is uh, her incredibly nihilistic and nonsensical take on marriage. She said, at the end of the day, a wife and a prostitute are both doing the same thing. What? But the prostitute is doing it with different men, and the wife does it with the same man. They just put a fancy label on it. I, I'm that's telling you. That's such a sad That's such a canned take. Like, that, who introduced you that? Right, and it's also it's inaccurate, and it's such a sad take on marriage. Like, you got married. What, what story are you going to tell your child? I married your dad in Vegas, and we had you, and I hate him. Like, I don't believe in marriage. I don't believe in anything. I just brought you into this world so that I can basically complain about the the existence and in 20 you. years she's gonna blame politicians and anyone but herself when her son is on antidepressants and sad or fox news uh, or fox news also i think this is kind of the perfect microcosm of why this show like these stories on their face sound silly and ridiculous but l magazine is still a very popular outlet women still read this stuff there are aspects of society that will look at this and think wow i mean cool i don't even know if people like mainstream normal women who pick up the magazine casually could read something like this and be like yeah I resonate with that I think it's just the journalist praising her and you know her insane colleagues oh. who are agreeing and, and feeding into this frenzy I'm gonna tell you if this was my interview and she said all this stuff I would absolutely publish all of it because it's insane it sounds deranged right. I don't think I would praise her but yeah well I would the writer said her ability to deliver a line that sounds like the unhinged rambling of a stoned valley girl but also makes you wonder if she's actually right. So it actually resonates with, with the, the, writer. the writer. But I'm saying like, it's if like I the... were to do this interview, I would keep this stuff in. If you were the reader and you're married and she's equating you to a prostitute, that's... how are you supposed to take that? Some Not well. What are you supposed to do with that information? I think, I think it's obviously separating people who believe in, it's, it's furthering a cultural divide. Yeah. People who believe exactly. that marriage that's is a positive I mean. thing and people who think, that you know, women are enslaved by men through the institution of marriage. Is this the same journalist who is like bragging about Eva Green being mean to people? Like exactly, she's such like, a... oh wow, she's so contemptuous and hates oh, us. Oh my god! It's yeah. like exactly what we want from any movie star. Like right? no, that is what you want from movie stars because you are mental. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, now that we've diagnosed the actual crisis in pop culture crisis, <laughs> let's uh, let's do some super chats. Okay, Andrew Jacobs said, Cast Castle 15 was so good. Mary rules, hashtag team pool. All right. I haven't seen it yet, seen it but yet. I'm excited. Caper2x said, how's the air quality there, Brett? Um, fine. All right, because we're in the radiation, we're in the uh, wind zone of the Ohio train derailment. Oh, crap. Okay, great. I, well, that got dark fast. Thank cool. you. Cool. Wow. Um, I guess you guys- We might be masking up. <laughs> Brandon M said, Mary, will you be my Valentine? Aww. Just like the entertainment is industry, it can be a lie, but make the audience feel good. <laughs> I don't know if it would make the audience feel good. I think it would just make you feel good. Uh, yeah, politely decline. 
RS Dug Your Chops said, a happy pop culture Valentine to our Mary and Hannah. Hey, Brett. Well, thank you. you uh, happy Valentine's Day, Brett. I don't want to leave you out of that. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of which, since we're talking Valentine, I'm going to end the poll and we're going to see what people think about Valentine's Day. Is it a psyop or not, ladies and gentlemen? Well, with 440 oh. votes, yes. Why 70, the black pilling? 71% think that Valentine's Day is a psyop. Just 28% say nope. A psyop of what? I have no idea. Also, guys, seeing as how we're, we're doing cards. this part, could you guys please hit the like button very, very calmly? Hit the like button so that we know that you love us on Valentine's Day here. So do that, would you please? It, it helps us in the algorithm. Um, Brush Meat sent a huge super chat. He said, Thank time you. for crisis. Thank you. Thank you for the party. Corey Anderson said, more hcb less dane and those other dudes ow i think mean. you just hate men like julia fox yeah you should go and you're, you're julia, part julia of the fox, problem julia fox is in the chat who knew is that julia just, fox just, on an alternate I do, account i do sometimes want to be on with dane like we cover two separate days but i yep. i think dane is so funny it'd be nice to be on with him on occasion yeah clint said howdy people hello howdy clint Dash Fortune said, happy creepy stalker day, CCP crew. So the first Valentine's gift was his ear that he cut off and sent as a gift to his cousin who he was in love with. Okay. What? I've never heard of that before. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I think, wait, what? Didn't Da Vinci do that? That was Da Vinci. And yeah. he didn't leave it for his cousin. He left it for his roommate who he was fighting with. Yeah. Um, Einstein married his cousin though, right? I read a little bit about Probably. St. Valentine last night and... Yeah. Um, it he he, it's a very ancient set of stories about him so like a lot of things we don't know for sure but he was a clergyman and it said that he secretly wedded christian couples um who were persecuted in rome and he was then beaten and beheaded and now his skull is uh on display in rome with a flower crown on it it's giving coachella (laughs) it's giving that's that's so gen z it's giving this is so immature. Fart Party said, <laughs> Hi, Hannah Claire. Have you seen your Italian speaking counterpart yet? Hashtag Deep Impact 2. Um, no, what? From, from PCC Greatest Hits Volume 2. No, yeah, you gotta I'm, watch it. No one has shown it to me. I've not received a link to it. <laughs> Goofer Trooper said, HC is my favorite co host. Let's go. All right. Oh, hey. Let's do, thank one, you. let's do one more and then we will come back. Okay. Thousand Foot Deep End said, Red Rover goes against. <laughs> the geneva convention that is all that's basically absolutely it. absolutely and, and we love okay. it okay all right we're gonna move on into the next topic from what i understand jk rowling has just won a libel lawsuit in england against a broadway actor named jj wells for this tweet right here yes uh do you care to read out what he said yeah. about jk rowling so, last year he says well to be fair the woman in question wasn't actually being threatened with being burned alive Hyperbolic metaphor based on her original tweet, but and then in parentheses, but you know, uh, but you know that you're playing dumb intentionally for clout. She also is a Nazi or at least has views that align with them. Seems like justification for legal action if you're calling someone a Nazi without any actual backing for that claim. Here's- so that's a big claim. So JK Rowling pointed <laughs> out that this same person, JJ Wells, had previously in 2020 made some post about like burning her alive. Yeah. I couldn't find it because the digital archive of these things is kind of a wasteland. We don't but, have the we don't have the archived version of yeah. his tweet, but we have her response. She said, "The thing about solicitors game, the solicitors game is everyone can play JJ. <laughs> I ignored your hyperbolic metaphor about burning me to death in 2020, but I'm starting to think that was a mistake. What's your solicitor's view on this Nazi accusation? Would they advise you to defend it in court? Kiss emoji. Look, <laughs> like even though, even I, I love her like shadowy feminist. villain persona that she uses on Twitter she's in her villain era. 100%. I picture her watching Maleficent in the background as she's tweeting this. I I, I get it. She's a feminist. She's she kind of dug her own grave by bending the knee to the woke mob in the early 2000s. But let's be fair. She couldn't have predicted where that was going to go. And her response has been hilarious. Brett, you were like, I don't care if Hermione is black and Dumbledore is gay. I don't. You're just funny on Twitter. She's funny on Twitter. <laughs> That's all there is. I followed her after that tweet. Just and because then she's being so petty. JJ replied, I don't know what he
he said, but it was likely something overly confident. And she said, okie dokie, JJ, we'll play it your way. Give my regards to your solicitor. And then she launched this libel lawsuit in the UK against him for his statement. And just last night, um, or no, yesterday morning, he said, on Twitter, I would like to publicly apologize for a previous Twitter thread where I interacted with JK Rowling on matters relating to the transgender community. I have now removed these tweets and would like to apologize to JK Rowling directly for causing potential upset. I failed to choose my words with care and would like to retract my previous statements relating to her views on the LGBTQ plus and more specifically transgender people. I would also like to retract my likening to JK Rowling to any far right or Nazi organization and emphasize I do not wish any individual inclusive of JK Rowling to come to any harm. <laughs> so he was decisively defeated. And now people are claiming that JK Rowling has abused UK libel suit law to intimidate jj wells and censor his free speech now if you're in england if you're an english you citizen you kind of don't have free nope. speech mm -hmm. in the first place so i don't know why they're even claiming this but they're claiming this was a slap suit meaning strategic lawsuit against public participation it and i had to look this up it says their lawsuits intended to censor intimidate and silence critics by burdening them with the cost of a legal defense until they abandon their criticism or opposition <laughs> so now people are saying like this seems like a cynical apology and i'm like yeah it's a cynical apology because he was forced to post it yeah it's part of their <laughs> settlement that he has to post this i bet he's not allowed to take it down i've yeah. met some people who you have to post your apology on twitter and also post it in the paper so that if anyone ever looks you up it can still there is like multiple mm -hmm. sources of the paper trail i don't even know if i think he should have had to apologize but his personality is just so annoying that I, I can't help but laugh. I mean, if you just look at his profile picture, He's you annoying. know exactly what type of person this is. Yeah, of course. That's why it's funny. This is a Broadway actor and actor. a drag queen. Jazz hands enthusiast is in Jazz his hands enthusiast. Twitter bio. <laughs> um, and, and this is the Twitter banner. It says, trans rights are non-negotiable. Trans rights are human rights. LGB with the T, trans lives matter. An attack on one of us is an attack on all of it's us. It's such so a cult. We know where this person stands. It's yeah. such a cult, dude. I think it's totally fair that he had to apologize. I mean, she took it to court. I mean, look, she said, I could have taken action with your first. This person has a history of uh, attacking her publicly online. She didn't take action mm -hmm. right away. She took it after, uh, you know, it's crazy that we would consider I will burn you at the stake or whatever less serious than being called a Nazi, but yeah. you know. Yeah, and that's what JK Rowling's point is all the time. Like these people seem to wish violence on women a lot. They mm -hmm. do. It's kind of suspicious, right? Mm -hmm. Also, I think it's fair to use the court system to defend yourself, right? Like libel law, especially in the US, is difficult to prove or win yeah. when you're a public figure. And if the court mm -hmm. sided with her, we should note that that is, uh, that's actually worth taking keeping in mind because it doesn't happen all the time especially for someone who's already famous and that means this is enough legitimate enough where it's damaging to her reputation which again is difficult the, the bar is very different for private citizens versus public figures i think that it is good to keep in mind that while well not in the not in the uk but in the in america theoretically your free speech but just because you can say it doesn't mean that someone can't push back and that includes legally right yeah. uh mm -hmm. you can't just call someone a nazi and expect them to be like oh, i can't say anything because free speech mm -hmm. like this and is if the they don't thing I've ever heard. accept that you're lying about them on a public forum you're accused of doing a slap suit right yeah. and if you don't fight back like well she didn't deny being a nazi that one time and then that gets you can't amplified win. right yeah um so now people are saying like the uk doesn't have certain uh exceptions standards for yeah. when it involves a celebrity so they think that wealthy people and celebrities are able to legally abuse uh because less, they have less wealthy to, and less well-known people that's kind of the way it is in america because of how much like there are whole cases i remember of when richard c meyer brought his his um case to court over one of his comic book things the guy just uh like waited him out just kept having court dates you know they would just have continuances and eventually just drains your resources mm -hmm. right like you just can't keep going so mm -hmm. it is kind of a rich man's game okay but to be fair major social media corporations do this to people who are yep. fighting to get Absolutely. reinstated all the time yep. why would it not like either everyone can't do it or i just don't understand like why it would be bad for jk rowling to do it when facebook does it and it's okay yeah uh 
and I don't know. I, I don't care about J.K. Rowling that much, but I think it's good that she's in her you. villain era. How can you not care? And about And I her? think it's fair that she proved that like calling someone not a Nazi online is yeah. actually something the British courts will say is wrong, right? Yeah. To so, be like, well, she deserved it. Too bad. How do you prove like like okay so? The, the term Nazi has become so colloquial. Mm -hmm. Like, it's funny. We were talking the other day when we did our review for The Last of Us, episode five. One of the things that I hate now is how these words, especially fascist, mm -hmm. should actually matter in a show like The Last of Us, but it just means nothing anymore because it's so overused. Like, like... Mm -hmm. It does it even have the same meaning? Just like gay meant something different 50 years ago than it means now than it did 20 years ago, right? That, that, that the meaning of that word has shifted at least three times in the last- Even ha queer. Yeah, have, have switched at yeah. least twice or three times in the last 20, 30, 40 years. So mm -hmm. like, also it's like far right weren't the Nazi socialists. Like th that doesn't even line up. I miss the times when we could just call people with tyrannical personalities Nazis. Like, okay, cleanliness yeah, know, right? Nazis. Okay, feminazi. The soup Nazi on Seinfeld. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was like, a, it was a colloquial term. Right. And now we've kind of regressed to the point where anyone who disagrees with my political ideology is a Nazi. And, and everything like, I... These people are so used to being in charge that the idea of facing consequences for saying yeah. something that is verifiably Shocks false about them. a well-known person, a billionaire on a public forum... They're shocked that that would have consequences. I mean, Yoel Roth of Twitter just had to testify before Congress saying and respond to a tweet where he said, I don't remember what he was complaining about, but then he said, there are literal Nazis in the White House this is under Trump. And, you know, Congress had to be like, do you stand by this? Was that accurate? He was like, no, that's not accurate. I apologize for my choice of words. words like, anything but anymore. the craziest thing is they could be racist and fascist and all of these things and still not be a Nazi. Yeah. That's just not historically no, it's accurate. because they don't understand it at all. And also it's, uh, uh it's, it's basically a slur for a specific type of viewpoint as stereotyped by the left and right? that's what she's talking that's what this person is talking about here they're not saying that you go out and march with the alt-right they're just saying they don't like your point of view therefore you're a nazi well and like he didn't say she's uh committing genocide against these people she yeah. didn't he didn't accuse her of being a socialist he didn't accuse her of being anything else a like, bad artist there was one specific group that he decided that she was a part of because of her ideology which is kind of ridiculous it's like uh, and by nazi i mean that your artwork is subpar and, and that could lead to genocide i think even if jk rowling didn't have the controversies about her opinions on gender ideology so many people would still hate her on principle just because she's rich and they are spiritually empty envious people and they're, just and they're to fueled by negativity, create, right? Yeah. Well, hatred have... is, is huge mm -hmm. right now. Like, ha I mean, it has been for a long time as the, uh, as the wealth gap grows, but it's the envy, the culture of envy we live in. I think if you can point out the most negative take, then you win, right? Yeah. And so being able to say, I strongly, you know, there are people in J.J. Wells' circle who are like, ah, oh, the courts are terrible for siding against you. You were right to say those things about J.K. Rowling. Like, even if he was forced to put out this apology to make the legal battle stop, I don't think that he actually sees the errors of his ways. No, he right? does, absolutely does not. And so, in some ways, this is just entering into public record that, and, and I think there are public figures who have to do this, saying, like, I have been accused and uh, given this label, and so, therefore, I need to formally show that I don't accept it by taking it to court and pushing back no matter how the court sides. And unfortunately, that puts the burden of proving that you are not this this claim onto the people who are not the ones gathering evidence, right? He's saying her stance on transgenderism proves that she is hateful yeah. and that she's a Nazi. It's cooler if we find out that he's actually just really into the free market and doesn't like socialism. So he's like, I, I don't support the National Socialist Party. Wait, what? The Nazis, right? That was the... Oh, oh. Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> he's actually like, just a big... socialism sucks. He's just a big free market guy. But he so never he's... said, J.K. Rowling's into socialism, <laughs> therefore she's a Nazi. That's true. I like my version better, though. I like, it, I, I, like it be I like it better to find out that this dude just reads a lot of Murray Rothbard and... and uh... <laughs> Very interesting. He has a Bible verse in his bio, and it's just Jesus wept. Uh, interesting okay. choice. Uh, do, what, what do you, how do you take that? What do you I don't know. I don't know how to take it. Because Any of his bio, his whole bio on Twitter is just like kind of a cluster F. Like Jesus wept <laughs> because Jesus doesn't like him? No, 
Well, who knows? Who it's knows? probably like Jesus wept because we don't aren't nice to LGBTQ, whatever. Of course. All I, right. I'm not. I'm being told totally here. There yeah. are a lot of churches that are like explain like Jesus would be mad because we're not inclusive of people and whatever yeah. else. I'm it's, always willing to dunk on progressive Christianity. The uh, yesterday somebody pointed out. They said, "Brett, don't you understand that being an atheist and being ag- being an agnostic are essentially the same thing?" Not really, um, though, right? No. Uh, it's not. As far as I know, they're not the same thing, right? Am I misunderstanding? No. That? No. Okay. No, All they're right. not. All well, right, let's go. Let's go to super chat. Life like, comes at port- you fast, JJ. Sorry, JJ. Uh, I mean, hopefully he doesn't have to pay out now, but he I hope probably he, does. he should have to pay out. I hope like, he has to pay out. Okay, let, let me rephrase Maybe that. in exchange for my his hope is that he learned his lesson. Of tweets but apologizing. Yeah. He didn't have to yeah. pay. My hope is that he learned his lesson. But a I don't lot of people he make did. people do both. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? All right. Francisco Sanchez Jr. said, we need an inverse golden ratio on PCC. Happy 400th episode from the future. Ah. Wait, he, he said Brett, but with the B in parentheses. I don't know why that is. So TGIF, I'm just are you Rhett in the future? Uh, but Rhett has an H in it. R-H-E-T-T is Rhett. Uh, not if you don't want it to. Well, thank you for the big super hey, chat. Hey, like, like I, I remember asking this question recently. I'm like, nobody spells, nobody should ever spell Brett with one T. And I'm like, Does, nobody spells Matt with one T. And then I, like, two Tons people, people do. two people were like, I know a Matt with one T. I'm like, no, you That's don't. That's insane, though. Like, but I think they were saying that it was. Yeah, cool. I'm a doormat. <laughs> like, uh, I think they said that the person did that by choice like they removed the second t they were probably legally they changed their name to remove the second t maybe they just go by matt with one t Uh, marco said is it the beauty that is mary and hannah claire that makes my heart flutter so or is it just my myocarditis (laughs) acting up uh, Happy it, Valentine's Day. Have you had anything recently that was considered safe and effective, I ask you? Have you seen all uh, the Dr. Fauci, you make my heart stop, stop Valentine's Not as good as the, the, the Epstein one that says, like, don't leave me hanging on Valentine's Day. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I need to stop watching YouTube said, was in Walgreens, squeezed a heart balloon until it exploded and said, I hate Valentine's <laughs> Day. But at least I always have poop culture crises. Well, the real question is, did you pay for it after you broke it? Something tells me this is not a real story. Is Walgreens, a, a, do you guys have Walgreens, like where you guys are from? Is Walgreens big out yeah, in? Walgreens yeah, Walgreens is a chain, right? Yeah, it is. But it's not like, everywhere, I guess. I, I mean, and I'm then only, in New York, it's Dwayne Reed. Do they yeah. own Walgreens? M- Minnesota or? has Walgreens, so I just wasn't sure if it was something that you it's kind of go turned into like the bougie drugstore. Well, it's like, it's like. They have two story Walgreens now. I think of CVS as being the bougie, gr- uh, uh, bougie really? drugstore. They're also like right next to each other. Like they, like, yeah. uh, uh, like they They're always, always just, across the street. Cross each other like gas stations. Where does Rite Aid hang out in like the stack? Is Definitely it... lower tier. Lower tier, and is it regional? Did you have those? We had Rite Aids, but there was less of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe maybe not. I, I'm thinking of the, the last Rite Aid I went to was in Philadelphia, so maybe maybe we didn't have them in Minnesota. Okay. I don't know. X said, "Rumor is Seth Rogen still waiting for his turn with Radikowski, but he keeps or but he gets her after Jonah Hill." Oh, that's oh too there's bad. there's a queue now. There's, there's a queue forming around the building. It's like why? It's like a it's like the bathrooms. Like men, women, Radikowski. It's crazy because there are a lot of attractive women who are not that crazy that who, you could find and date. Who I'm sure would be happy no. to date a weirdo like <laughs> they uh, want Seth Rogen. they want to date a woman who hates them for being male. Yep. AMF opposers said Sammy Hagar threw up the Illuminati symbol on stage when Van Halen were at the MTV Awards in the mid 90s. No one cared. <laughs> well, you know, it was a different time. It was a different time. What was the 90s, man? If it's not Illuminati, what are they saying it is? I still can't get yeah, past this. Yeah, I don't know. Or are they just admitting that they're doing it to be edgy and they don't know what it means? It's cooler if it's that. <laughs> It's like a kid who flips. No, but now it's like we're embarrassing. Talking, now we're talking about like lots of different it's, genres. It's funnier if it's this. that. Yeah. It's funnier if it's that. It's like kids when they do like when they swear but they don't understand what the what they're saying is bad. Yeah. Chris said, speaking of real men of genius, look up vault soda commercials on YouTube. You'll thank me later. This sounds like a great way for me to spend my night after I'm done with my work. That's mm-hmm. um count me in. <laughs> Johnny Beck said, Oh, he sent us a thumbs up. Thank you. Because reasons said Chicks like that are what I fear for society, I mean. Like mm. Chelsea Handler, Emily Ratajkowski, yeah. Julia Fox. Julia Fox. All there's of them. so many to choose from. And, and like the, the more that like I get stuck watching videos from like Clown World on Twitter, the more I do think that like Western women are like slowly like have been hired to destroy the world. No offense, ladies. 
Yeah. <laughs> White Western women are out to destroy society. The awfuls. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's not that they are intentionally out. I think they have been weirdly pro like yeah. programmed. No, they have. Crazy. Like, which is funny because that means they've been programmed they've been by hacked. men. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they have any real opinions. Like if the status quo were Nazism, they would be throwing up the Roman salute. No question. Because the, the logic they give to everything else is just as bad. The, the yeah. logic they give for why they support what they support now. They're just going along to get along. It's just, just as bad. Yeah. yeah. KMF opposer has said, I want Chelsea Handler to repeat this poem on her deathbed when she's alone with no family by yeah. her side. The irony will be epic. She I mean, I don't people. wish that on her, but she's rubbing it in everyone's faces. Yeah. Do you want, I mean, did anyone watch that video and think this is a life that I want? Partially because it's all like, show me actually what your life is like yep. when you mm -hmm. go through. Like you made these fake things about climbing Mount Everest and going to Paris. Like actually you spend a lot of time alone and you don't have a steady partner to, you know, if you are experiencing yeah. something traumatic or she can't imagine like, her career is that booming either. Nope. Like you eat dinner alone because your friends are busy with their lives and children. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't show you her day at all. And that must tell, tell you that it's There's not a very good do. day. Yeah. She, she but she has a lot of money, so I guess she wins. She didn't even have a roster of men. She had like a dating app on there. She didn't even like talk about how she just has like, I have a bunch of boy toys. I can call it any like, given they time. They show her swiping their app and she's just getting rejected over <laughs> again. Yeah. Oh no. Thousand Foot Deep End said, the video screams the lady doth protest too much. Yep. True. Rega Tan said, watch Puss in Boots. It's my, it's this year's best anime. Okay. Well, it's not anime, but it is great, and you should watch it if you haven't. Read one more, and then we will move on. Dash Fortune said, we need a based version of The View. Shouldn't be too hard to find four to five based women worth listening to. Mary Hannah Claire, Brett C., Amala, Michaela P. Can be called The Right View. Oh, geez. Okay. And Sketch Therapy asked for a Fast and Furious update. Excellent. No update this week. I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. All right. All right. What do we got next? next? Jenna Ortega has recently bemoaned some very intense filming schedules she faced while doing her role as Wednesday. She definitely called Netflix. the way ambulance. She definitely called the way ambulance. Yeah, and, and a lot of people are now saying that Netflix abuses their workers, their performers, because of what she said. So um, here's what she revealed to us. It was to show up to set two hours early, do a 12 to 14 hour day, then go home, get on a Zoom and have whatever lesson I had or show up to my apartment. My cello teacher was already waiting for me. It was just constantly going. And if you could on a weekend, if we weren't shooting the sixth day in the week, it was all right. Well, then we'll get your lesson in on that day. So she it sounds like she insisted on learning cello to play Wednesday, who, who plays the cello. Instead of she opting for her contract. Yeah, yeah. So like she takes a lot of pride in like doing her own stunts. I've seen her brag about that. That's cool. It's cool that she's as dedicated as she is. But here is uh, how she continued this statement. She said, I did not get any sleep. I pulled my hair out. There's so many FaceTime calls that my dad answered of me hysterically crying. Important that we have dads in the household, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm, just yeah. saying, what would she, where would she be if she didn't have her dad to answer those important FaceTime oh, calls? It's, and a testament yeah. to their relationship, right? Like yeah. when she needed someone to help her. Dad her was dad. there. That's she cool. also said that Tim Burton was very encouraging to her. Um, yeah, but she talked about like how difficult it was to manage learning cello for this role. And I was uh, wondering like, I mean, I'm sure you could have opted to have a stunt double do it for you, or she admitted that at times they had cello doubles. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, it's pretty cool that they were this dedicated to making the show like detail oriented. And my favorite yeah, thing, yeah, especially if her, her character's gonna continue to play cello, you know what I mean? Like, she might as well, yeah, pick it up. Because and she had to learn a song, uh, that was actually meant for two people to play at the same time, not one. I do love watching old movies when they're very clearly not playing the song on the guitar, mm -hmm. or the, like, I, I, I you're do seeing love them that. hold a guitar, but like, you can't see yeah. them holding any notes, it's uh, or like the piano that's just it's well, they film it from the above. front, yeah. yeah, they film it from the front, so you can't see their hands moving. Yeah. Like the, the piano is the easiest of them to fake, yeah. So, right, I, I think it's easy to write this off as she's you know, uh, an actress who's complaining about her life and what else. Like, I, I do think this must be the kind of schedule where. You're on. You're you hear in about, charge, right? And you hear about like ER mm -hmm. nurses, right, who will work twelve-hour shifts several times in a row, and then they're off for a couple of days, but they're exhausted. This mm -hmm. is, I think, probably similar. Like when you're filming, you're on completely. Maybe you get some rest time 
later. And I, oh, I'm very uh, pro sleep. I think it's really important that everyone get enough sleep. I think not. I think chron being chronically tired and being chronically short of sleep really messes with your well being. Can mess with your yeah. gut health. It can mess with your emotions. And so she's how old? She's like a teenager, early twenties. She's 20. twenty. Right. This is. I mean. I, if you told me that she was in college and she had all these classes and all these reports and she called her dad feeling overwhelmed and tired, like it would be the same thing. College students are notorious for skipping, for not sleeping. Uh, I don't think it's that it's abusive. Like I don't think Netflix is necessarily doing anything wrong. It's just mm -hmm. that the lifestyle and the production schedule is intense. And unfortunately, I'm sure it is exhausting. A lot of the responses to this are like, I'm sure my life is way harder than Jenna Ortega's life and I don't get to complain about it yes, you do. on I'm the sure. internet. But sure you're you literally complain. doing that as you comment. So yeah. this right. one person said, Imagine if Jenna Ortega had a real job. I remember painting houses for $20 a day, 12 hour work day, then travel time back, get everything ready for the next day. And he also said he worked on many shows and movies and he knows like how much work is, is involved in that and like the time the actors dedicate to it. Um, so he thinks that the vast majority of actors don't have a real job because they're just on downtime while the crew works. My, my, I think that's a fair comment to be made that everybody's life experience is different and she's not claiming that her suffering is any worse than any other. Yeah, that's what bothers like, me. If it's if her saying like, this was a crazy demanding schedule and I was exhausted by the end of it and they're like, well then you should get in the coal mines and work. Like, like simmer down team. Yeah, it's, it's not, not the same thing. She's not saying your life is bad and it's not like, she's not even saying- You I, have a right to complain about your own struggles. Right, and she's not even saying like, I would yeah. never do this job, it's too hard. Like then you might make fun of her a little bit, right? But. She's just yeah. saying this was a demanding schedule and was exhausting. That seems totally reasonable Fair. to me. Yeah. Uh, well, some people think that this reveals something specifically about Gen Z. And they just don't want to work. Yeah, like people not wanting to work anymore, specifically Gen Z. And you see all these videos of them from their Starbucks job, crying about all the mobile orders. Uh, and the, like, the, the guy, I, it, the it that was... Uh, but like, I understand I why working at least even if it's not hard work, feels meaningless these days and tires you out more spiritually. Well, and I think probably it's easier for her to go into this job and agree to learn the cello and agree to work really hard. And even if it's exhausting, push through it because she's passionate about the project, right? If I worked yeah. 70 hours a week at a Starbucks then I didn't like it there, yeah. I would be miserable too. Yeah. I would not enjoy it. Like working really hard when you're fulfilled by something is a very different experience. It's very not that different. it's less exhausting. It's not that you are, are not taking a toll on your body and your psyche and everything else. It's just that at the end, you feel like it's worth it because you're proud of what you're accomplishing. I think yeah. there are Gen Z, I mean, just like any generation, there are people who are unhappy in their career choice, but also aren't willing to push themselves to pursue something they're more passionate about or willing to accept that like their job is boring, but they also don't have as much stress as other people. That it's mm -hmm. like before this job, my jobs were always not, you know, like not soul sucking, but mm -hmm. like it was just a job. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it was the end of the day. And this job I work, this job I work way more, but it's far more fulfilling and is something that I actually care about. Whereas another job, once you clock out, you're done caring for the day, you don't have to worry about it. That's not really the case here. So it's a trade-off. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot of people Gen X and above have espoused the view that having a meaningless job or one that doesn't have an outcome you care about is fulfilling in and of itself because it like builds character. And I would say that if you have a meaningless job that you're not super emotionally tied to, it could be nice because your identity is not your professional work. Yeah. Also, and I think that yeah. can be positive. I think people overlook that, right? Like if you have a job that pays the bill, but your passions are outside. Yeah. So you go to your job, you do your job, it's cool. Why are you pointing at me? Uh, was, uh, 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 there was a stink bug on your- Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> feeling threatened I think, over I here. You got... If you have a job that pays the bills and you're like, it's fine. Yeah, I have that one coworker I don't like, but it's not who I am. It's not what yeah. I'm passionate about. Cool, that's good. I think too much of Americans put their identity in what their professional career is and they forget to see that life is about so much more than your job title. And for them, it was about uh, having a job that paid the bills in a 401k so they could go home to their families. So it was only part of who they were. Like you've seen Office Space, right? Where it's like, mm, uh, like that's kind of what it was right there. Like people forgot that back then, like you could have a soul sucking job and, and a lot of people got kind of sidetracked by the fact that they weren't fulfilled by their work. Yeah. Well, t not taking uh well taking for granted the fact that it afforded them a great deal of stability yeah i i know a bunch of uh blue collar guys who do real estate stuff you know electricians carpenters and 
they'll book jobs that they'll work on you know, three or four months but they'll schedule themselves so they can take all of deer season off yeah. to go hunting and in some ways that's good mm -hmm. they provide food for their family things like that but like they have chosen a career where maybe in a different life they would have done something else but they like it they're good at what they do and they get to schedule their lives so they pursue they what they're really in the interested winters, in yeah whatever uh, it is like yeah. there are different ways to handle this i think with uh this story it is a reality that if you really want something you have to work for it and especially yep. when you're starting out you have to put a ton of time and effort into it uh, but i don't think she is therefore exempt from being able to say and i was exhausted yeah. you know of I course do you think, were i do think there's a problem in our culture where like, you, you, like we get stuck with like the gary v's of the world who, who give you the platitudes on hustle how, hustle yeah. no matter but, like, what like there is the idea that when people get home from work they just go watch something on netflix or they go sit around and they don't actually do something that they care about because the work has tired them out and they just don't have the desire to do so and i get that like i get that when you're done with work you just want to be done with work but a lot of people that I know that have successful things that they do on the side whether like, I have a friend he's a he's a teacher full-time teacher at, he teaches English at, at a high school and he has two YouTube channels one of which is very successful one of which that he cares more about but is smaller because it's related to skating but the other one is very successful I don't know where the hell he finds the time to make the he does it's all like himself. doing that and grading papers and grading papers. And, like, he's like sometimes it's like on sundays he's like i go and he's like he's like working on videos as he's grading papers i'm like do you ever like type in the grades well some people thumbnail? have yeah their day job and a side hustle and another side hustle yeah. and a hobby and they actually are very harmonious like that they and love it maybe they're a little crazy they're the that's women fine. of men i think maybe the reason that celebrities are so hypersensitive that they end up snapping at the audience and blaming the audience for their feelings about their projects is because they're the type of people who are way emotionally invested in yep. their work and their work is their face right it is very different yeah. when you're being attacked for a project that is actually you right if you I were feel that way about this sometimes yeah i do like i i, I know that that's not like uh, what you sh you should say it never bothers you but it's like as somebody who doesn't really if, if i'm being honest like when i'm done with work if somebody asks me an opinion on something I, go, I don't care like most of the time i don't care so <laughs> when your job is to care and to share opinions mm -hmm and people are there to then judge you on them where not in a productive manner meaning like you don't get to have a conversation about what that opinion is but somebody gets to make a comment about it mm -hmm. as they dissect it oftentimes in the most uncharitable of manners right like i'm not a huge fan of that aspect of it so i do understand where the shortness comes from i don't think it's right and you should never be rude to people for no reason and mm -hmm. i i don't do yeah. that but like, i get where the Henry inclination Cavill, for comes instance from. Yeah. he's someone who's really passionate about something like the witcher mm -hmm. or like warhammer 40k then you know feels camaraderie with the audience who also yeah. like it instead of attacking them when they maybe have one criticism of the way he interprets something like it's like us with our live chat as opposed to the people who comment on the shorts yeah <laughs> sure i mean that and that's because they lack the context yeah. of what we're talking about yep. and why yep. and that's why they snap like that so i don't really care and i'm used to how tiktok works and it's worse than that oh yeah it's worse. It's, comment sections are where society goes to die most like and to be fair i find myself in plenty of comment sections like popcorn in hand reading people mm -hmm. argue about the most useless of things that is a guilty pleasure of my own. I'll fully admit that. Yeah. I do miss TikTok, though. Uh, I want my TikTok Are you going to start doing more stuff with the uh, pop culture crisis TikTok? Because you were a TikTok lady. Yeah. I mean, I have ideas about it. Probably live streaming. I don't know. It's, you don't uh, do, like, the trend stuff? Well, it's hard because... It's both Dane and I scrolling on it. Yeah. So then our but algorithm he doesn't do the, is different. Yeah. But you can find like generally what's trending yeah, probably for both yeah. of you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It'd just be a way to get back into it if you were. I, I get it. it. Like like the there's a certain part of it where like you have to detach yourself. Also because like it, it, whether it's uh, as an actor, like if you're an actor, would you really want to care what people think of you? Because so many people will see the work. It's not like like if the people like it, good. But it shouldn't. You shouldn't let that affect your personality, anyways. Like you shouldn't let your who you are be swayed by the good or the bad. Mm -hmm. Like you should take the criticisms in stride, oh. and you should take the compliments in stride. But that's it. This is what I wanted to bring up, though. Like. Okay. How would this compare to the situation with Simone Biles, for instance, an oh, Olympic yeah. athlete who ducks out of the competition? It kind of saves her 
her status as an unmatched athlete by a technicality because she, she didn't, didn't compete, compete again. Was that because she couldn't take her Adderall? That I, was what I heard. I don't remember I don't exactly what it was. Um, but she said, you know, it's just a general mental health thing that she had to step back to take care of herself. Well, and I don't know. I think that might be a different situation. I think it's, uh, it's very clearly a different situation, in part because Jenna Ortega filmed the show and the show got made, right? Yeah. So with Simone Biles. It got I, done. Yeah, right. If They said this is, what, eight months of production, and she had to work really hard and it was exhausting. Okay, cool. Get you. Yep. You know, it's the demands of an industry that I'm not necessarily in. With Simone Biles, I get that she's been training her whole life, and especially probably leading up to the Olympics, it's more intense. But then to then not compete, number one, it meant that you couldn't bring a gymnast to fill that role. It's too late. So that meant your team suffered. Yeah. But also, it would be more like her, like Jenna Ortega being like, I just can't do it. And so they don't make the TV show. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I, I think that Simone Biles is her own person and she gets to say when she feels overworked. Woo. But you realize like why you were given a spot on Team USA and that was for this one specific thing to compete right. at the Olympics. Reminds and like, me, I, oh. I don't, sorry. No good. I don't condone the obviously abusive practices that a lot of other countries use against their Olympic athletes. Like in Russia, China, you know, I've heard terrible things about that. But when you compare that to the American athlete ducking out due to mental health, it does make us look soft. And when you become an Olympic athlete, you're leaving your personal identity at the door to represent your nation. Yeah. And it's, when you do that, like on the public stage, it's embarrassing for all of us. It's for so me, sad. it's more like a missed opportunity for another athlete, right? They only come around yeah. four years. Gymnastics is highly competitive. It's That's also true. highly injury prone. Anyone else, there it's are zero people sum game. who could have filled the spot. And I guess you didn't know until that day that you weren't gonna be able to compete, but I think you kind of make an agreement with your country and with your teammates, especially that you are going to try because while gymnastics is an individual game, it's also scored as a team. And yeah. so she hurt a lot of people by deciding, and again, it's her choice to decide she can't compete. I just think maybe this is something that you, um, you it's an opportunity that someone else could have had and would have tried, like, you know, yeah. would have been willing to have the chance. I don't think that's really what's going on with Jenna Ortega being like, yeah, no. I worked crazy hard and then it was exhausting. Then I got the job done. That's you know actually I mean? something to be proud of. But like with Simone Biles, I don't think that she should be put down for her decision necessarily, but she definitely shouldn't be praised for it. Like the, the fact that the immediate response was like- Stunning and brave. But stunning was, and brave, adulation over the top. That she somehow even broke a, gl a glass ceiling for mental health advocacy, even. That was insane. Like, I that still, response was totally unwarranted. I, my, hot, my initial take was she, she not only doesn't deserve to be praised, I, I, I do think it set such a bad precedent that she should be not derided, but she should be held to account in the idea that, like you said, somebody else could have filled this spot. And if it does, and, and from what I heard, it's because in, where, where was the Olympics at? Was this Tokyo? Uh, like yeah, Tokyo. It, no, if, China. If it right? was if it was allowed to be played in America, you would have been able to take your Adderall because you were prescribed to it by a doctor. And overseas, they didn't allow anything like that because you couldn't bring it into the country. Huh. That uh, that I, was. I'm a, surprised that we didn't hear more of that then. Um, right, she can't be the only Olympic athlete in the entire world who didn't who couldn't who takes Adderall and wasn't allowed to take it. Yeah, like, but she's the biggest one there, so it's the biggest yeah. example of it. Uh, also, it, it does remind me of Stephen Amell talking about when when they when when they were making Arrow, like that's he's working eighteen hours a day at the minimum eighteen hours a day. Only some of that is shooting. If you look at the shape of most of the actors on that show, they get into phenomenal shape. Mm -hmm. As the sh I mean, he was always in really good shape. He was a CrossFit dude. I think he was a CrossFit trainer before he became an actor. Mm -hmm. um, they get into progressively better shape because they have to be in such good shape for their on, you know, fight scenes and just, you know, to, to look a certain way on camera. And they, he's doing 18 hours a day, nine months out of the year for almost a decade. That's insane. Yeah, it reminds me of there's this, uh, I, don't, I don't even know that she's particularly famous, but a model who posted a selfie and she looks beautiful and whatever else. And someone commented, just a regular Instagram yeah. user, like, man, I wish I could look like this. And she responded, it's my job to look this way. Yeah. Like, I, it's, I go to treatments, I get, yeah. you know, I t like, it's my job to make my face perfect. Yeah. Like, don't put pressure on yourself kind of thing. And also I'm not, but like, what I'm 
criticizing of Simone Biles is not like I don't want the brain dead take like you couldn't like of course I wouldn't be able to do the stuff or it like doesn't no one is negating under, how incredible those accomplishments were or that she was under a lot of pressure yeah. and she felt stressed exactly. like that's all real and like I said she has the agency to do what she wants it's just a missed opportunity for a lot of people definitely the athlete who could have filled her spot I think you're definitely right definitely for her teammates yeah. but it, again it's totally different than what's going on with Jana Ortega who is just saying my industry had a lot of demands for me and it was hard and I made it through. And I think you're right, man. Uh, I think you're right about Simone Biles. Like it's not necessarily that she shouldn't be, she should be put down for it, but she should definitely not be given praise and adulation for making that choice. Yeah. Maybe that was kind of what I was the thinking. The response from the media was yeah. the real indictment of our culture. Uh, and, and let's face it, she's part of an industry where she will be paid, uh, I'm talking about Jenna Ortega now, she's part of an industry where she will be paid very handsomely for the extra work you're not like she's not doing this for pennies she's not doing this for minimum wage she's doing this to make a good amount of money that yeah. will i bet you i without even knowing this is she the face of a hair care product line or a makeup brand i bet you she is she's got all kinds of i bet you she's a, the head of endorse like she's a head a main endorser of some big brand now like she's gonna be big like she, she's she is already but bigger exactly so so like hard work that's Fine, but like you're you're being compensated for yeah. it. So super chat right, time. Let's do it. Uh, because reason said, "Hey Mary, I need to know from the expert: Does Brett have a soul? Am I the, the certified Brett expert? Do, I, do I have a you're soul? You're the soul expert. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you the soul expert or the Brett expert? Yeah. I, you're not um, a ginger, so I'm confident you do. Fair enough. You just don't like Valentine's Day. You I, just think it's I never up. said that it was that, that it was a psyop. I think it's that no one asked, asked for it to be question. his Valentine, yeah, exactly. and now he's just mad about he's just, it. He's just really, really bitter. That's what I am. <laughs> Mr. Toad said, that video appears like someone hired Chelsea Handler to make a parody of Chelsea Handler. Could yeah, be. Becoming Maybe a parody a of herself. Maybe it's a deep fake. Maybe. That's a real possibility eventually. They're, they're testing the waters. Uh, that's, that's how they do it. <laughs> Chelsea Handler, like, Chelsea Handler, Handler could, like, push back and be like, that wasn't me, but she actually found it funny. She, so, so she just takes credit for it. Double Derp said, told my GF I will surprise her with flowers no less than six times throughout the year rather than pay Valentine's markup. It mm -hmm. works, gents. You're welcome. See, I, to I told you earlier. That was, I yeah. said, it's not that I limit Valentine's Day. It's like, shouldn't we be gracious and yeah. uh, giving towards significant others all year round? I'm not saying I that you have to make the gesture every day. Right. I think it's just that you, you do something to acknowledge that you like yeah. your partner if, if Valentine's Day helps you remember to do it, fine, yeah. go for it. But if you do it on your own, probably that's fine. And I suppose, like, you, you're also, you could also be correct in that, like, look, it's a reason to celebrate. Do we need to really, are we yeah. so nihilistic now that we just don't need a reason that we yeah. just have to just uh, Stop say being no. a downer. Stop being a Debbie Downer. <laughs> I need to stop watching YouTube said it's a weapon of mass production, actually. Uh -huh. L -O -L. Oh, I get you. <laughs> Raymond G. Stanley Jr. said, Julia looks like she should be on Jerry Springer. Oof. Probably tried to get on there, Maybe. to be honest. X said, dude, she won't even pretend to be your Valentine. Who? I don't know. Julia Fox. Julia Fox? Uh, Big Dave sent us a dollar without a message. Thank you. Thank you. X said, free speech is a principle even in the UK, sort of. <laughs> the well, they, they hold it as merely a principle, yeah. but not in action. You know what I mean? It's over 9,000 said, no soup for you. Yeah, that's the soup Nazi. Yeah. Yep. Marco Rosso forever said, Mary knows it's better to keep your Valentine's secret. Love is best like that. Ask Dante. Dot, 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 dot. It's cumby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, um, have you ever seen the Seinfeld one where they're, they're wearing the ribbon for breast cancer? I think it's for, for breast cancer awareness and like, Kramer says he won't wear it because he just he's like I support it I'll go on the walk with you guys it's like a walk for cancer awareness mm -hmm. but he doesn't want to wear the ribbon and they're like you have to wear the it was it was like equated to masks when when it was all going on he's like I just I just don't want to wear the ribbon like I'll yeah. walk with you I support it I just I don't want to wear the ribbon and it's just like black squares just like Ukraine flag it was prophetic <laughs> only in a way that mostly only gets done right by Sign, or I'm sorry by uh, the Simpsons they're better at predicting the future but Seinfeld did it on a couple occasions yeah. too. With The Simpsons, it's kind of just like if you reach a critical mass of content, then you're going to predict everything <laughs> that could while. ever possibly yeah. happen. Yep. Uh, Shumi Shelley sent us a sticker. Thank you. Thank you. Jacob Edler said, HC, great job on IRL and good call wearing black. 
Oh, thank you so much. I wore black yesterday, so I wore a different color today. Bobcat said, at the rate HC is going, she's going to have to watch Fast and Furious 12. <laughs> I still need to think of a challenge to get Mary to do. Well, right. uh, have you, You're watching I, Harry Potter, right? Yep. I am watching Harry Potter, but they know that Fast and Furious is bad, so they like forcing you to watch it more than they like yeah. forcing me to watch Harry Potter. I'm trying to become motivated again. Like, I was... <laughs> trying to like keep, go along for a while, but it's the AIDS ribbon in Seinfeld. Sorry, I had that one wrong. Um, let's do one more, and then we will come back. Okay, sketch therapy said Velma hates you. Fast and Furious doesn't remember that. That's true. Uh, I will watch Fast and Furious because it's not as terrible as Velma. That That's is for sure. saying that is very little. The bar is very low. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> not my favorite, but not the way that I actively have no interest no. in watching Velma. All right. All right. This next topic is about Roseanne Barr's long-awaited comeback from cancellation. Long-awaited is a little bit hyperbolic. <laughs> this is like, like high school nostalgia for me. Like <laughs> <laughs> Roseanne Barr, if you didn't know, in 2018, fired off a tweet that I'm sure she came to regret tweeting that compared one of Obama's advisors to, I believe she said, a mix of the Muslim Brotherhood with the Planet of the Apes. It was the Ambien, ladies and gentlemen. It was the Ambien. And as somebody said, who has prescribed you know, to Ambien for years, I can attest that it will make you She was using Twitter too much. Things. She was on Ambien, whatever, whatever. Um, and this had disastrous consequences for her career at the time. She had been in this reboot of the original Roseanne for a couple of years by then, right? And it was doing incredibly well. And... ABC just didn't accept her apology or her explanation, being that she said th she thought that advisor was white and that advisor was black. So we were in the grips. Of, therefore, like, it's wrong. <laughs> we were in the grips of TDS at that time in 2018. And, and we were deep yeah, in that. We were deep in the insanity. TDS. It so, bothers me that they don't have a screen grab of her tweet. I hate when they aren't putting it anywhere. I hate yeah. when outlets do this. They'll be like, this offense, they do it to everyone, this offensive tweet that they said, but we won't show you because we'll you just can't paraphrase it. it in the most unflattering That's way possible. That's the J.K. Rowling tweets. Well, how, to a yeah. how can I know this tweet was yeah. that bad unless I see it myself? That's exactly. what they do with J.K. Rowling. They say her extremely transphobic and Kanye, tweets. Kanye, all kinds of yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. So Roseanne fell from grace because of this situation. They did not accept her explanation for why she tweeted it. And then they, they continued the rebooted show well, they, without her mm -hmm. by killing off her character yeah. and renaming it the just Connors. The Connors. <laughs> and I didn't know this, but Brett, you well, said it's right? still on the air. I don't know if it's still on the air, but it was on the air for way longer than I expected it to. It's really, like, that's a psychotic conclusion to come to that we should just kill off her character in the canon of the show that she essentially created. I might be misremembering, but I think her co-stars were like, we don't agree with this decision. Obviously, they don't want to lose their but, job. I mean, they but... kept going. Yeah, but so they she's don't still, still on the air. She jobs. still feels, yeah, the Connors is still on the air. She still feels like she was wronged by her co-stars because they were complicit in what happened. And that's I true. Mean, like, they... they earned money off of the backs of the show that she made it what it was. Let's face she it. She made it the number are... one show that it was. I'm not surprised that they would want to keep going. It's a rebooted show that they're all potentially going to collect a paycheck again from right like, that's not john, that crazy like john uh, i honestly it's kind I of think a lot of john... to ask to be like walk out on a on a career stop mm -hmm. earning money exactly like it's like in the, at the end of the day you're still it they is kind of like what virtue signaling is right it's like at the end of the day you're going to put your own and your family's interests before the interests of the lady you work with yeah. unfortunately like and if i'm being honest when i think of roseanne i think of john goodman as much as i think of roseanne yeah. i do sure. i didn't really watch the show a lot growing up but i've i've seen it and like again yeah i i just remember i thought i thought the man had been like this is a bad move but maybe they sold her out maybe they should have said more i'm not surprised that they weren't gonna be it like, wouldn't have mattered but we'll like, leave the job like have they been working in anything else they're making money for the to first be fair that's what like uh dave batista was like that when james gunn got fired from the guardians of the galaxy he's like i'm walking out and i'm gonna break my contract and this is like they were like the the guardians of the galaxy cast were exactly like that when james gunn got fired initially from guardians 3 before they secretly brought Everyone's him back out for themselves wouldn't it have been cooler if that they they the con everyone in there was like no we don't want to work with this network and then the network sold it to like Daily Wire. And then 
See, yeah. that's going to happen. Like, I wonder about those actors, like those movies that the Daily Wire licensed before they started their own studios. Do you think they have to answer questions now? Where they're like, <laughs> you were in this alt-right Ben Shapiro made far, you know, the so-and-so movie from the Daily Wire. They're like, look, I just took an acting job. Yeah. Like, to the people that don't care. Honestly, this is a special case in 2018 where I think if Roseanne had done this today, we're so fatigued with cancel culture that ABC would probably just have a PR team give her a debriefing on what to do on social media. How to stop using Ambien. How to respond. Stop, yeah, stop using Ambien at this time of day. And then, and then make her go on a struggle session with 40 members session. of the, of go the on presidential the candidate. Go on The yeah. View and she go could, on an apology tour. And then what, they just bring her back. She could film a special where she talks to people who have said crazy things on Ambien. And that would be hilarious. Yeah, I could like have been a on PSA. That one. Yeah, I you could, could be on. Could. I mean, I really feel like this is the goal that we're missing. <laughs> Whatever. Is Fox producing her show? Or she has like a comedy special now Fox yeah, Nation yeah. they are the ones who now should send her like as if she is an Oprah but she's speaking to people who have to then read their like crazy mm -hmm. tweets it's our, so now, yeah. it's our ghettoized culture now you've uh, been cancelled now off to Fox and the Daily Wire with you but her, I her new by. special is called Cancel this with an exclamation it's so mark boomer. at the end. <laughs> it's so boomer. And it, it That's part of her charm. Cancel though. this. It's charming to some, cringy to others. But if she tried to be anything but boomer, we'd be like, she ran for right. president in 2012. Oh sure. Well, I didn't Green know part. if this part was sarcastic, but she said she she ran as for the presidency as a socialist and still identifies as such today. And I was like. That doesn't seem right. She, 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 I bet she does. I mean, the self created green tea party. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think that a lot of people don't know what socialist means, and so they can identify as socialist. You know what I mean? I, I'm not surprised by that. She's a bit of a wild card. I clearly. think also what she's saying is that they painted her in one light, even though that's not representational of our. When we saw this happen with David DePap, yeah. the guy who attacked Pelosi, they were like, he was a far right extremist, except he's a registered member of the Green Party. What and all of his kids are like, no, he's definitely a liberal. It says that mm -hmm. she was repeatedly criticized. She criticized Jill Stein after losing the Green the Green Party nomination in 2012. And she ran under the Peace and Freedom Party ticket. What the hell is the Peace and Freedom Party ticket? Let's go. There are tons a wild of backstory. I'm, I'm here for it. No, there's a ton of minor political S parties in the U.S. Sign me up for the, for the Peace and Freedom Party. Uh, I... Sad for Roseanne, this is not good, but none of this means anything to me unless I can see her tweet. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it's really that bad, you should be able to publish it so I can read and be like, how could she say that? It's that bad. Yeah. Right. But it wasn't. It was just yeah. like, it was just taken But out now of it's that they have manufactured a scandal. Like yeah. if if I read the tweet now and I was like, nah, it's not the spiciest thing that's on the internet. You know it's what I mean? It's definitely not. Because Even that's from the thing. like the paraphrasing of it, it seems tame enough to me. By but. disappearing the tweet though, we just have to trust from mainstream media that she said something bad and that there was a scandal. And I is, want to evaluate the evidence myself. And this is the further proof now that cancel culture has become a product. It's become a product that is now being sold to, to boomers. Yeah. I, it, it feels that way to me between I mean, Louis C.K. When Piers Morgan came out with this show Uncensored, yeah. while still being very uh, cemented in the establishment media, yeah, I thought this is kind of a disingenuous angle. But at least for Roseanne's case, she was legitimately wronged, and it was a unique case where she was just like thrown to the wolves. Yeah. Like particularly egregiously. Now that I'm looking back at it, and um, if she feels like she wants to have the last word or the last laugh, then you know more power to her for that. I I just don't know if it's going to be aligning with my sense of humor as someone in a different generation. But she said that it's going to be her most offensive stand up that she's ever Ooh. done. And I'm Ooh. like, are I don't know. How how I, offensive are we talking? It does, do people now think being offensive is the same as being funny? Like sometimes no, I feel like these comedians are like, yeah. I'm so offensive. And so therefore I'm edgy and cool and watch me like you can say offensive stuff and it's not very interesting or entertaining, you know? Yeah. Most of the offensive stuff is not said at a time when they're trying to be offensive. It happens by accident because people are offended by everything. Like Amy you Schumer is an offensive comedian. She yeah. says offensive jokes. And she's they're also still not terrible. Funny. She's <laughs> yeah. a terrible comedian. They're not good jokes. Being offensive doesn't make you funny. I think that's what people yeah. are missing. I, I, I think that, you know, it's probably more wholesome than she's letting on. And she still has retained a lot of her audience from before because she's just such a cultural mainstay. And she says herself that, like, when she started doing stand up again, 
the audience that appreciated her most was completely like diverse, more than the media would ever have you believe. And I even saw this quote from Norm MacDonald, which RIP, one of yep. the greatest comedians, he said about Roseanne, on the original show, she had a uh, network sitcom's first gay couple. She would always want more minorities on the show, on the writing staff. When she did this reboot, it was all her idea to get all these different orientations and religions and so forth represented. She is certainly not a racist. That's crazy. So now, like on Pop Culture Crisis, when we see showrunners with the same agenda, we're immediately suspicious of it mm -hmm. because it means that you truly are more fixated on race than any of the people you accuse of being hateful and racist. Turns out Roseanne but it, Barr is from just Roseanne as bad. Barr, like, is she just as bad or is she just, you know, a naive baby boomer who was raised on the values of actual inclusion and tolerance is now being faced with the ugly side of it and she was thrown away by her own kind. It's a monster of their own creation. Yeah. It, it really is. Like it backfired on her bad. When I when I watch old movies and I laugh at how naturally diverse, like what they've done now, if you actually really look at it, it's not that they're necessarily more or less diverse. They are. But one of the things that they've done, so if you've got a cast of four people, right, you would know that back in the day, the lead guy had to be white. That would have been the I guarantee the studio, whether it's racism or not, or whether it's marketing 101, whether they still bought into at that time the we need to sell this product to people who look this way because they're the majority of the market. So the the main guy would be white, the main girl would be white, the rest of the characters would be diverse, right? Now they've just swapped it so that the diverse characters are the leads and the white people are the are the side characters in most of these shows. Mm -hmm. Like the de the demographic makeup, it is always funny when that like there is this the college brochure candidate like there's the college brochure like shot of any show where it's like it shows all the cast members and it's like yeah i don't actually believe it it's statistically probable that all of these people would have ended up in the same place that doesn't seem realistic to me it's the bullshit meter i'm always talking about like yeah. it, i don't buy it because it feels like some lady named jan who works in the hr department talked to kelly who worked in the casting department and they wrote out a list of who had to be hired to do this whereas back in the day whether you are talking about roseanne or even like Look at Top Gun Maverick. I guarantee you that Tom Cruise had a large uh, amount of say in the casting, and that was a diverse yeah. cast, right? So it could be done better by a good leader, leading producer and actor whose name is on the show than it can by Jan and Kelly in the casting and HR departments who are yeah. strictly doing it, whether it's for ESG as mandated by their producers or just because they just got out of their most recent DIE uh, training seminar. I don't think that um, what Norm MacDonald was referring to, I don't think Roseanne did it in that same cynical way. Like someone yeah. in the chat said, I think Roseanne was just trying to do her the best she could yeah. and she seems like a genuine person. I totally agree and that's why I take more of a sympathetic stance to her, even if I don't like understand some of her viewpoints or click with her sense of humor. I agree with her when she said like, these people wanted me to commit suicide. Like yeah. I genuinely think that full of the perpetrators of actual cancel culture they do want you to disappear yourself yep and when they killed her character off they were doing it because they wanted her to die too yeah like they're murderous bloodthirsty people at the very least they want you homeless in a box where you right. can uh, for where a tweet you can, that they won't yeah. show us i know i'm sounding yeah, like a broken yeah. record here but like well, I'm it's sure it's on crazy. Google Images. But. Yeah, but why wouldn't the Hollywood Reporter include yeah. that, right? If it's so they're bad, it's because it's fake, right? It's because yeah. all of this was a manufactured scandal from the beginning just to crucify someone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's crazy. And I think that feeds the worst part of society that needs there to be negativity and something to attack someone else for. I mean, people live for this. And mm -hmm. I think that was, this was one of these examples in 2018. And she got canceled and then things subsided a little bit. Like she was a hallmark because it, in some ways, you see cancel culture ebb and flow. It's not always as um, strong or as vicious. There are moments where there are like, oh, I think we've gone a slightly too far. Now we've got a, a little bit, not overcorrect, but yeah. simmer down for a minute. And then it comes back. And 
she happens to be one of these peaks in the in the ebbing flow of. That's got to be scary for that for like a, somebody in Hollywood too to just not know if today's the day you're the one who gets just castrated and, and, and sent culture, out to pasture. And if culture mm-hmm. is so vitriolic, that is it going to be like you can offer an apology like I took Ambien, or you have to die to repent for your sins? The yeah. uh, in, in most of these, like, like I said, with when we were talking about sl- slash. Well, yeah, I did want to explain that. Yeah. Seemingly tenuous connection. I saw this story where Slash from Guns N' Roses was recently interviewed and he was just like reflecting on a lot of his career and he wrote a self-titled memoir back in 2007. The interviewer asked him like how did he decide what to include in there and has he thought more about what it would be like for Guns N' Roses to have come up in this day and age and he said I haven't actually thought about it in that context. I mean, I really, to be honest, haven't thought about all that scandalous stuff that much recently. But now that you mention it, most of everything that Guns N' Roses did would have gotten us canceled in this day and age. He means- we would not have fared well in this environment for sure on so many different levels. But a lot of the things from back then would not be what you consider acceptable in this moment in time. I'm just glad that we didn't have the internet back then. Yeah. It would have been a different world altogether. But anyway, I don't dwell on all that stuff. It just is what it is. He's clearly dodging the question because he doesn't want to get investigated. The, but uh, you can guess what yeah. Guns N' Roses was up to in the late 80s. They, you know? weren't, they weren't checking the IDs of the women who got on those buses. Sure, I and there's so much you. more. Like, can you imagine what they said in private? Yeah. That would not be acceptable today. And that's just what's behind closed doors. Yeah. But then think about the content of their music like this interviewer brought up a song of theirs that's known for being very controversial one in a million and axel rose wrote this about moving to la and encountering a lot of seedy people he said you know like this has references to someone attempting to assault him who was gay and uh immigrant workers who tried to like pull scams on him uh said like things about African Americans that tried to like sell fake goods on bus lines and like crazy stuff like that. And it it was an angry sounding song, right? Yeah. And it says the N word in it. It says <laughs> it says the bundle of sticks word in Oof. it. It says all sorts of things. And that would just simply not have flown today like that is not something you could put out today today you have to put out a song like watermelon sugar and dress up like a little girl and you know cough cough hairstyles then you will be considered a real rock star you can make that stuff but i guess the the was the industry as corporate as it is now like i'm sure like whatever record label he was a part of in the 80s has consolidated down even further to like less and less companies and by the way like slash is half black he performed this song, I'm sure had no objections to what was in the, like the content of yeah. this song or the lyrics or they have other controversial songs as well. And you can tell that yeah. they're trying to manufacture some outrage again and it's just simply not working because he's not from this generation. All of that generation has to be living terrified of all the things that are eventually going to come out about them when they're like, and I was on a tour bus with them and this happened. And it's like, he's like, he's just, he was just coked out of his mind. They're just coked out of their mind. Did a bunch of heroin. They're like, that could have <laughs> happened. I have no idea. Maybe like, like, you know, like no was, one has the Snapchat screenshots. It was though. the eighties. It was a, it was a different time. Yeah. Like exactly. it's uh, very, very scary for them, but uh, it, it does, uh, uh, make you wonder like what the next musician will be who will just be like who was who it recently steven tyler yeah steven tyler was exposed that. for allegedly yeah abusing this girl like she was forcing like, her to get an abortion when she was very young <sighs> and it's just like you never know what these celebrities are like in private once again that's just a, like a walking they're walking psas as to why you shouldn't idolize them you yeah. should never look up to any celebrity. Yeah. I know. All right. We got some super chats there. Who for Trooper said, Brett, will you be my Valentine? <laughs> See, What's I don't, I don't hate, answer? I don't hate Valentine's Day now. See, now okay. that I, now that I've been asked. Caper 2 x said, HCB, you are correct. More than three 12 hour shifts and you're a danger to yourself and others. Please borrow Mary's blankie and nap before IRL. <laughs> That's funny. 
Nathan Goss said, as someone who builds pallets for eight hours a day, I mean, I find meaning in that I'm making an object that has a purpose, but I don't pretend that my labor is more or less valuable than someone who makes charts. All right, exactly. I mean, like, good perspective. like uh, for, for me, I just think of it as something, that's why I get so excited when people tell me they listen to the show at work, right? It's like your, uh, I don't think that, it's not like the annoying artists who pretend like their art has this great societal value, but if this allows you to, in, you know, if it makes your day a little bit better at work, that's about the greatest compliment I could receive, mm -hmm. so. Andy Leiterman said, don't forget to check out Trad Queen's Story Hour weekdays at 6 with Sour Patch Lids. Tonight, Lids reports on UFOs from a SpaceX laser satellite. He also said, Lids and I miss y'all and the crew. Keep up the great work. Hope to see you guys again soon. Hey, congrats on your new puppy. Yes, Aww. buddy. I will talk to you soon in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thousand Foot Deep End said... Harry Elwes is a raging leftist. I imagine he wasn't too pleased <laughs> about the Daily Wire acquiring the Hyperions. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> ha ha. Like that's, that's like, it would the opposite of that be like if Kevin Sorbo had like a movie sold to Disney now or something? <laughs> or Dean Cain. Yeah. Uh, those are the only two I can think of off the top of my head. Who are the Who are the other conservative actors? But even that... then, it seems less targeted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, uh, also, uh, Kevin Sorbo's from Minnesota. He's like, he's from, uh, he's from like up the uh, mound, Minnesota, which is like uh, hoity-toity. So you wouldn't retire there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to afford to live there. <laughs> Love the the term hoity-toity. Hoity-toity. Yes. <laughs> A highfalutin, if you will. Yes. I am what I am said. Off topic real quick. The hydrogen chloride released into the atmosphere by the train crash will form hydrochloric acid when combined with water and burn organic matter. Stay safe, Beanie Crew. Have you guys seen the dead chickens? Check that out on Twitter. I don't worry. Great. What? Why would I want to look at that? Oh, yeah. The Ohio uh, Department of Natural Resources was like, oh, yeah, 3,500 fish in the area died because they had this you know the story. Yeah. Okay, I won't waste mm -hmm. your time with it. Well, it's not a waste of time, but I won't take up PCC time with it. Uh, and Pete Buttigieg is our, like, whatever, commissioner of transportation or something. The, uh, he's a secretary of transportation. Secretary of transportation. Great going, guy. He's focused on the racism in the train industry right now. He's focused on he's making chest in the next first lady. Yeah. He's uh, <laughs> not focused on keeping the trains on the tracks, and that's kind <laughs> of an issue. Yeah. Bad Adam 12 said, Happy Super Taco Love Day. It's Taco Tuesday and Valentine's Day at the same time. Ooh, it only happens once point. every 236 years, 16 months, 69 days. Everybody celebrate. Brett, go to Taco Bell. Somebody Fred tell neck. me Taco Bell has a Valentine's Day promotion for this this moment. If they don't, if they, they should. Did, they should fire their entire marketing department. I want for a heart shaped this. crunch wrap. Yes. Oh my god. A heart shaped tostada. A I'm pink so Baja now. Blast somehow. Even if they put like tacos together in a heart shape. Yeah. I could, I could I'm sorry. This work. is a missed opportunity. If they didn't capitalize on this, whoever says Super Chat this should get hired by them. I'm yeah. so hungry. Now. Ooh, if they had like a heart shaped carton to like give you the, your uh, Cinnabon delights in. Little like, Cinnabon delights. Way, way better than truffles. There are so many options to talk about. Would have yeah. nailed all of them. Yes. I can't. Uh, I feel like this opportunity. And the fact that didn't. I don't know that there's promotional material makes me think that like. Wait. Let me look this up. We need to know. Is it an actual thing? Oh my goodness. Valentine's. Now, now I'm just really hungry. Also, if you're like a teenager, you're dating someone, and you want to do something for Valentine's Day, like that would have been a perfect, you know, not too expensive way yeah. of being like we're marking Valentine's Day, unless you're. Significant other is fancier than apparently I am. I'm so hungry now. Yeah. No, I'm not seeing any promotions here, but Missed I do see now. an old article said, meet the guy who had a romantic Taco Bell Valentine's Day dinner. You remember, do you remember he like put video? down a tablecloth and candles at a Taco see, Bell. There was the Everything video. is the experience you make it. Yeah. There was the guy who, who proposed at a KFC and got like laughed at by people on the internet. And then... Better than K Olive Garden. But then KFC... And then a bunch of companies all got together and paid for the wedding because the dude got like, like KFC yeah, paid for the, this. KFC paid for like the catering. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Uh, and, and like another company 
bought the ring. They got like, a ton of like. They got like the whole <laughs> wedding for free because this dude got dunked on because people are basically soulless pieces also, of garbage. Also, that person said yes to him, right? Yeah, like, they said it yes. It was okay. Yeah. yeah. Also, it doesn't talk about on their like, little hot sauce packets have like a will you marry me or something. Like the, they oh, are yeah. actually the most romantic fast the, food place apparently. The guy who Drinking did Drinking Baja Blast from wine glasses. I am telling <laughs> you, the fact that they did not pick up that Taco Tuesday was also Valentine's Day and run with it is crazy. They the, need your help. The guy no, who proposed- Or the Super Chatter's help. The guy who proposed at KFC did it because of that's where they went on their first date. Aww. So, like, so it actually horrible. okay. That's cute. If it was just random, like they're just waiting in line. Yeah, I would. That's that's a no. A little more me, effort. But, but if it was like <laughs> your first date or you guys, whatever, man. Yeah. Or what? Andrew Tate, you go there on your birthdays. That's KFC. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly right. That's I was that was literally I was just thinking that story too. I was like, is that relevant here? Where he talks about like how him and his brother would. Yeah. I feel like any engagement you want it to be meaningful for the two of you, and if it's KFC. So Good. be it. Like it's, if it reminds you of a time when the relationship was first starting and you've you've uh, advanced past there. Now, for all we know, that guy could be rich. I mean, that's even funny. KFC has hired him. Least, yeah. <laughs> all right. Next. Uh, let's go next. Keeper 2X said, Brett, you mean Dolores from HR? Yes, Dolores. No, Dolores is a cute name. Yeah, Dolores is a good name. Uh, like, definitely like a Terry. I imagine HR. Dolores has been ruined because that's Umbridge's first name in Harry Potter, the, the evil oh. professor. Yeah. I, I guess I, I haven't reached that part. No, you're, you're not far enough. You're, I you'll assumed get there. Uh, Dory from the fish movie was also the fish Dolores. movie. Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I Does, think, okay. Also, doesn't Nemo mean nothing <laughs> in like I don't know Latin or no, Maybe. not Latin, Italian or something? Could be. I and I was know. like, why would they call it Finding is Nothing? That, like that's because you already have is it about his did. hallucinations it's that his very son is still avant -garde. alive? What is the hidden meaning in this? Potatoes for Seamus sent a dollar without a message, and then he said, can Serge be my Valentine as well as Brett? Uh, you'd have to ask Serge that. I, I, you know, that's a consent issue. Yeah, Joseph said, that sounds like your greatest comp is, wait, what? You helped? Um, okay. I don't know what that means. And then he said, super chat character limits are racist, change my mind. Uh, or he said, change my m Okay. <laughs> Submit more evidence. That's what I want. All right, yes. guys. Because um, I think they'd be genderist, right? Because women typically use more words than men. Ah, uh, yes. More verbose. Yes. We've got a wild story to end the show, guys. There was an attendee in the first row at a Sarah Silverman comedy show who was wearing blackface as a, <laughs> a form of peaceful protest against the comedian. And he was kicked out. Yep. Uh, this video is actually crazy. By the way, guys, he is black. Yes. And his name is Michael Jackson. Michael B. Jackson. Kind of like Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. I, I don't know. Is that his... I, I was found that surprising that it's his legal name. Refused to leave the premises, so they decided to lodge a formal complaint. Cops said that they issued a summons to Jackson for defiant trespassing. According to the cops, Jackson also complained of a medical issue. Like, on one one person said that he was heckling them. Another person says he wasn't Wait. heckling them. The, like, he was just down sitting here. there quietly in This blackface. is what he looked like. He was sitting there quietly, not disturbing anyone. Just... He was, he was black and wearing blackface. Which, Which arguably is just not finding your right skin tone. Well, there were a bunch but. of minstrel performers who were black and who put on blackface because it's an exaggerated caricature and that's, sure. that actually is historically accurate. Yep. Mm -hmm. So like, and obviously protesting because Sarah Silverman herself, you know, in the past. So here's what he said you on Facebook afterwards. Sarah Silverman had the security goons at Ocean Resort Casino and AC attack me and rough me up because I wore blackface at her show last night. I wound up in the hospital. I'm 71 years old and it took six of them. Apparently Sarah Silverman feels it's okay for her to wear blackface, but no one else. <laughs> My, and you can see this picture of him in the hospital bed. And apparently they did. With blackface still on? Yeah, with the blackface still on. Um, I would personally <laughs> like to start a GoFundMe or Give Send Go to send this person to protest uh, at uh, Justin Trudeau's next yeah. uh, public press conference. I feel like- You can just go he, down the list. He can be the patron saint of, remember that time you did blackface and still got to keep your position of power? <laughs> next to Gavin Newsom. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of them. Yeah. This guy could have a career. Weirdly, a lot of examples. The casino says that Jackson presented himself as offensive and thought that the thought they have the right to remove, though they have the right to remove or relocate anyone from the property at the time. The statement went on, Ocean prides itself on both a diverse workplace and customer Base. Well, obviously not diverse or inclusive enough. 
because otherwise you wouldn't have kicked this guy out for peacefully protesting your your crappy comedian show. Also, what if this is just his look, man? What if had, like, he didn't even know Sarah Silverman had done blackface? He just showed up like <laughs> He's this. minding his business. He's Why is it blackface? that Roseanne Barr... I'm, I'm reclaiming the, uh, the blackface. <laughs> how yeah. is it that Roseanne Barr gets canceled for, for saying some mean things on Twitter, but Sarah Silverman just gets to go on... Yeah, because like, Sarah Silverman is one of the moralizing glitterati of Twitter. Ugh. She get she can get away with anything because all she does is attack other people. It is absolutely Specifically bonkers. people in blackface, despite yeah. having done it herself. <laughs> also, guys, before we go, I've got some bad news. Yes, in fact, Velma Season 2 is confirmed to be in development after a divisive debut. Uh, I, I have heard it that... It got immediately signed for two seasons. It was immediately, yeah. like a lot, It was always planned as two seasons, I think. I think there's credence in that because it ends on a cliffhanger. The, the show actually well, it was ends. going to anyway because they yeah. believe it's going to be handed to them yeah so right. so get ready for two another season of me looking forlorn and dejected as we discuss it <laughs> you're gonna we do don't have to yeah. review it do we <laughs> are you gonna do it why do a second season if we know it's bad we're gonna we're gonna do it oh so you like this job gonna, you're doing this brett, on purpose brett likes velma guys he's that is actually not true. a huge fan Wait, why though? Why would we review the second season? We gave it a chance. Right. If you, we end, know that it's worthless. If you because, ended the first season on a maybe, right? Maybe it could get better. I would yeah. understand doing the second. But if you know it's bad, why do the second? It's not because even I'm, a shred of because of, I'm dead inside and it makes me feel something. <laughs> even if that feeling is is irrational, irrational hatred, hatred and anger. And anger. <laughs> you yeah. should make it a poll in your next super chat. I just, I, I just, uh, I need to feel something, even if that something is complete hatred of of, of a uh, television show. I think you should ask your audience. Room. I think you should make it a poll in the it's, chat. Next it's really time. just Stockholm syndrome. They've, they've, uh, I, I've identified with my captors, and now I, I need their approval by hating them and wanting Mindy Kaling yeah. to write uh, some response about it, so. Uh -huh. It is what it is, guys, so. So I guess the clownfish theory is proven correct. Seems, it seems Nemo? so. <laughs> uh, That's a weird uh, coincidence, but no, it's clownfish TV, so like, they made all of the episodes ahead of time. Oh, I believe 100%. So. Also, nothing's gonna stop them. They like Velma, they're keeping it. The, yeah. It's, uh, it makes no sense. How, like, how is it that uh, Zazlav hasn't come in with the ax and just yeah. These these showrunners just need to see themselves represented in media. <laughs> if, if he cut the show, he would be axing a diverse, what, what lesbian, bisexual character. Doesn't matter. They he they axed fake it. They axed Batwoman or Batgirl. They didn't have a problem axing. She didn't that. have a girlfriend. It's different. True. True. All right, Hannah Claire, thank you so much for coming today. Hey, thank you guys for having me. It's been a ball. Let everyone know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at hannahclaire.b. You can find me on Twitter at hc brimlow. You should definitely 110% follow at Timcast News on Twitter and Timcast News on Instagram. We are both of those places. Best way to get your news from my favorite journalists. Uh, you can also go to Timcast.com and click on the read tab. Thanks Perfect. so much for having me. Happy Valentine's Day. Go to Taco Bell, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Ta get some tacos after the show. This was not a paid paid advertisement. This no, is just, because uh, they're not no, even capitalizing be. on this opportunity. <laughs> okay, we've got one more super chat from Caper2x. Not a good idea, HC. In Canada, they throw the book at you if you protest the prime minister. Brett, man up. Do it for cuter Brett. Mary, happy Valentine's Day. Make mine Marvel. Wait, is I the idea? That was a lot. <laughs> I didn't say it was a good idea. I just said he should do it, right? Not everything we should do is necessarily easy. The, is the idea here that I would watch Velma season two for Brett Cooper? Is that what they're saying? Uh, Mike Hunt also said Brett is a masochist confirmed. Yes, uh, that yeah, is that, true. That is that is me. I am, yeah, I but I'm so. not. Like most of the times, <laughs> Mary's the concerts, right? Like we mm. sent you to the Rihanna concert, and you guys concert have to like reviews. review. I don't know what the copyright <laughs> issues would be there, but it would be kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I feel like we get these articles where it's like they did this crazy thing on stage, but what have you got to witness it live? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get the feeling in the room. Yeah, yeah. I've, I'm being serious. <laughs> All right, Mary, let everyone know where they can find you. Yes, you can find pictures pictures of me on Instagram at Mary Archived and you can follow me or send me hate on Twitter that is also Mary Archived. All right guys, thank you so much for joining us today. If you would like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Brett Dasovic on both. For the show, we are here Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. We also have one more super chat there, Mary. I, I've interrupted the process. Um, Caper Two X said she's the cuter Brett DC boy. Okay, so so it is he is talking about Brett Cooper. Okay, wow, fair insulting. enough. That is a little bit insulting, you know. I'll roll off my back. It's fine. <laughs> uh <laughs>
It's like water off the exactly. duck's back. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. If you would like to listen to this show rather than watch, we are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. The show is also on social media. We are on Twitter at Pop Culture underscore show, Facebook and TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis, and on Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Later.